The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. It's savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning State Fair Specials. Savings from $30 on a tune-up all the way up to $950 on a new cooling system. Visit standardheating.com slash offers for details on all their State Fair deals. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 X. A group of parents in Southern California are angry after a Boy Scout hiking trip went through a nudist beach. <laughs> On the bright side, all the kids pitched a tent in record time. Went to a nude beach for the first time this summer? Wow, it's not what you think it is. <laughs> and let me explain, it's not weird to see naked people. We see nudity all the time, you know, cable and R-rated movies. But those people in the movies have been pre-approved to be naked. <laughs> They went through a, a, a casting director or somebody, you know? Everybody gets onto the nude beach. It's not the Playboy channel down there. It's, it's more like the Discovery channel. Top 10 things you don't want to hear at the beach. You're going to have to put a top on. Oh, oh sorry, sir. <laughs> Due to the mortgage crisis, we're foreclosing your sandcastle. Wow, that lifeguard can really put away the gin. Uh, I know you're not drowning, but would you like mouth to mouth anyway? Yeah. Number one thing you don't want to hear at the beach, uh, where did I bury Grandpa? There you go. Let's go to the beach. Go to the beach, come on. It's National <laughs> Beach Day. You sunscreen. Okay, turn your radio up. Well, damn, is that something or what? It's Let's Go to the Beach Day? National Beach Day. That's great. I'll pass. Yeah, you won't find me anywhere near a beach no. today. No, I'm good. Yeah, We're really any day for me. Yeah. <laughs> I checked out of beaches once, like, August hit. I don't know, like, once August hits, I'm in, I'm our, like, just, like, transform into fall mode. I'm done with summer. I'm done with summer activities. Oh, you mean check out, like, you're done check out, not go check out yeah. at beach. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I got confused. Ah. <laughs> but up until August, you do still hit the beach? Yeah, I like beaches. I love swimming, so. Uh... Not me. Yeah, I like to be able to go do some tanning, and then once I get too sweaty, so, like, you know, five minutes, then I hop in the water, hop back out. It's nice. I'll tell you this right now. I've never been much of a swimmer. I like going and saying, oh, sweet, uh, it's a cool lake, ocean. All right, let's go eat something. That's yeah. about all I need. <laughs> all right, where's the hot dog stand? Yeah, my <laughs> wife would lay out there all day long. Oh, wait. It's just Thinking, not for me. Or talking about swimming, I, something happened to me not too long ago that I had to tell you guys, and I, I'm, I don't know if I told you off air. Uh, I don't think I did, but I went to a pool not too long ago, and it was just me and a bunch of old folks. They were doing, like, their exercise and stuff yeah. that they do. And I turned around, and one of the guys has, like, snorkel gear on. And he's, like, in the water, just, like, swimming around. And is that weird? Well, maybe he was practicing for an upcoming vacation to Matsalan or something where he's going to... I have no idea if that's weird. I hope so, but he was, like, 90, so I don't think he was doing any snorkeling soon. To answer your question, though, yes, that is weird. <laughs> Wait a minute. He was, you know, he was checking out chicks. Okay, me and the lifeguard girl even kind of looked at each other weird, like, what's this guy doing? You mean he had the goggles on and he had a snorkel in his yap and he went into the water? Yeah. He was looking at butts and crotches. <laughs> that's what I, I mean, I know that's how we did it when we were in junior high. Um, when, it, uh, when it came time for swim... The swimming version of, of uh, 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 what's the class called? Gym? Class? Gym, yes. Uh, uh, when it came to the swimming portion of gym, me and the big Al would always grab the underwater goggles <laughs> so we could look at, at girls' butts. Yeah. Uh, maybe he never outgrew that, but maybe he's just <laughs> practicing for something. I don't know how the old folks operate, nor do I know how anyone operates at the neighborhood pool or the beach. <laughs> Uh, anymore. I mean, when I was a kid, I, I enjoyed a bicycle ride down to my neighborhood beach. Those were mm-hmm. fun times. That was know. fun. That's hopefully, hopefully, one of my buddies, you know, who had parents who actually wanted them to have a fun childhood, hopefully, one of those buddies would bring the boombox because <laughs> uh, I never had a boombox. We'd crank the Scorpions or Judas Priest. And we were naive enough to think that we were intimidating people. <laughs> uh, because, you know, nothing scared the general public back in 1983 more than scrawny 11-year-olds cranking German or English-based melodic rock. But those were a lot of fun, fun days right across the street from the beach. 
in my hometown, there was a, a massive drug store with a candy section as far as the eye could see. Mm. So we'd load up on candy and sit out at the beach. Oh, God, there's that sixth grade chick that we think is hot. Those were good to... I I also remember we were, uh, we were reckless, disrespectful dickheads whenever we went to the beach when we were kids. Uh, very destructive... Those are some of the memories that I have. I got banned from my neighborhood beach. <laughs> I got banned. I was told to never come back again. I think this was around sixth or seventh grade. Um, I got myself into big trouble, and I had no idea uh, what I was even getting myself into. Uh, who? Someone said something about a lifeguard a minute ago. Yeah. Uh, Ashley, Ashley did, yeah. Lifeguard at the neighborhood pool. Were any of you ever lifeguards? No. no. Had a lot of friends that were, though. It looks brutally boring. Yeah. It I did. don't look good with white um, zinc. You know, zinc on my nose. <laughs> so they, I was eliminated immediately. And I think the fact that I don't know how to swim also took me out of the <laughs> quote unquote pool. Were you also not, a, are you still to this day not a great swimmer? I've had one swim lesson when I was maybe in third grade. So I was going to say, we never had. In school, we didn't have a pool. We didn't have swimming lessons, so I'm surprised. So you didn't pick up anything in the swim class? No, nah, I didn't put much of an effort in. Like, I, you and I, something else that we have in common, neither one of us are, Jesus, don't don't count on us making it to shore if we ever capsize <laughs> on one of our uh, booze cruises. Neither of us knows how to swim very well. No, I mean, I took, I've told you before, I took swim classes as a, as a little kid. Someone pooped in the pool. They called it off. Uh, that was the end of my, and then in junior high, when we would take swim classes as part of gym, I never made much of an effort. I'd just kind of F off. And like I said, Al and I would put the goggles on and try to terrorize girls. That was, so no, not a good swimmer. So they don't have, they didn't test you out and anything, practice certain strokes, like you had to master the breaststroke or yeah, something. Oh, they, we they, had to do all that. Yeah, yeah they, they, mm-hmm. you had to do the breaststroke and whatever the hell. But, you know, like I said, it, I didn't put in much of an effort and I was happy to take the F, you know, who cares? It's swim class in junior high. I remember we had to try and hold our breath for as long as possible underwater. I was terrible at that. Oh, I suck at that, too. I can do that in the men's room here on sales days, on Tuesdays. (laughs) (laughs) We've mentioned it before. There's one particular guy. I don't know what he's eating. I don't know if he's even human with what he does to that bathroom. But, yeah, you you have to hold your breath the entire time. Uh And I pee for a long time. (laughs) So I, the, think, the, I think I could save you guys. I'm I'm pretty confident in my swimming abilities. Well, I don't, Cubby and I are putting on weight. No, I, yeah, you guys are good. We're putting on weight. Guys. Every day we get a little larger. And uh, then I can do CPR. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, Michael that, squints Paladoras. Well, <laughs> let's practice that right now. Okay, at least the mouth to mouth portion. Open up, big guy. <laughs> you might need that CPR on dry land. Uh, <laughs> you know, here in studio someday. So. I'm glad you have that skill. The reason I got kicked out of my neighborhood beach, apparently it was for life. Um, A friend of mine dared me. So the lifeguard, at my neighborhood beach, the lifeguard, uh, there was one on the, tell me if this is common or not, there was one on the beach up in a a tower. uh, Well, not a tower, but a tall chair. And there was another out in the water. There was a big tall chair in the water at the... what do they call it? Like the barrier? Don't swim farther than this oh, barrier. Yeah. And the rope, yeah. Whatever, the ropey rope thing. There was also a lifeguard out there sitting in a tall chair. Huh. So I was dared to get in the water. Oh, oh okay. So the, the lifeguard who was out in the water took a break. He jumps in the water. He swims away. He went down the street to get some candy from that drugstore I was telling you about. He, he's gone. He went summers. My friends dared me to swim out to his tower, which was, like I just explained, a challenge for me because I was never a good swimmer. Swim out to that lifeguard tower, pick up his megaphone, and say something filthy into the megaphone, right? (laughs) Tell everyone at the beach to S my this or kiss my that, right? I said, you got it. I'll take that dare. So I, uh, you know, uh, sloppily swam out to his (laughs) tower. And here's what I didn't know, and here's where the trouble went from zero to 100 pretty quickly. I, I got up on the tower, I squeezed the uh, trigger on that megaphone to say something dirty, and I had some funny stuff planned. But what I didn't know is I pulled the trigger that blares this insane alert out 
so the cops down the street can hear it. That's the someone's drowning trigger. Oh, no. boy. No. I, yes, I didn't pull the talk into the megaphone trigger. I pulled the, hey, cops and ambulances come here now because someone has drowned trigger. So this unbelievable alarm is set off out the megaphone. Here comes the neighborhood cops racing in because they heard it from three blocks away and they're under the impression that a child has drowned. (laughs) But no, it's just stupid me standing up there finger in this megaphone thinking I'm funny. I can imagine they don't have a sense of humor about they something like that. They did not have it. And the lifeguard who was on the beach said, you're never coming back. And the cop said, if you ever come back, we'll put you in handcuffs. They were probably exaggerating, but that was the end of that. Oh, the old lifetime ban. You going to go test it out today on National Beach Day, see if they let you back in? <laughs> Beaches don't really interest me anymore. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, it's but not they, for me. They sure did back in uh, 1980 something or another. I mean, there can be some nice eye candy, yeah. certainly at a beach. We were very lucky, Josh, growing up in Egan, um, where you now live. Uh, Cascade Bay, the water park, opened when I was in sixth grade, and man, Dude. that was a lot of fun. That All the girls were there. Awesome. The place is so much fun. There was it has a water such good a, wa- a water park. Is it still there? Still yeah. there, yeah. Cascade mm-hmm. Bay Water Park. Yep. Mm-hmm. What uh, what kind of activities uh, could you get involved in there? They had a lazy river, a splash pool, a couple big pools, a couple big water slides, a couple tube rides. Did you do great this, snack sir? bar? Everything. Have you done this, Josh, with the uh, the, the young people that yeah, have been involved? Yeah, we've taken in... their, them there a couple times. Really? That place is awesome. <laughs> Did you put on a life jacket? No. <laughs> I don't I don't know if they have. I mean, they got water wings for kids. Yeah, uh, they might not allow life jackets. Some places don't allow certain flotation devices. I mean, I'm just more of a lazy river guy if I ever go to something like that. Sure. And sometimes I get a little mad because those rivers aren't as lazy as I'd like them. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, you have to be careful, though. They go pretty fast sometimes. And, and, then, so, and you go underneath the waterfall, too, where yeah. you're not really expecting it? Nope, you're not expecting to get your head wet. Next I, thing you know. I got scraped up pretty good on one of those because it's far too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Josh getting injured in a lazy river, that just makes a lot of sense. I can see that happening. <laughs> it did, it hurt. <laughs> I had no idea that Egan had a water park. Yeah, it's a pretty popular one. Yeah, yeah Apple Valley has a really popular one too. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. right in the backyard of my uh, my high school. I'll True be that. damned. That's that's a big water slide they got. They do got a big one. I had a buddy who worked there in high school and high school, maybe a little bit into college. And <laughs> anytime somebody brings up lifeguards or lifeguard, and he goes. Yeah, uh, two saves in the career, two saves. Nice. <laughs> That's actually pretty terrifying. <laughs> I'd be so afraid. But if you hear his story happened. about those saves, they're very minimal. Oh, okay. It's not like life or death? No. Doesn't have to whip no, out the CPR no. or anything? No. He basically just helps some two people, get two little kids get to back to the back to the shallow end, oh, essentially. Okay. <laughs> but he likes to, he literally really likes to drum it up, especially in front of girls. Yeah, two saves. Two saves on the career. <laughs> have you ever got, have you guys ever done the, is it the wave pool yeah, where you can that, do some kneeboarding or whatever they call it? Scary. I, I haven't done that, but I was just going to say, we always had the wave pool up by me. A little wakeboarding? It, is that what they call it? Yeah, but it was just the tube uh, wave pool. Oh, yeah. Or, you, tube or you don't wave have to be in tube. a tube, right? Yeah. Oh, those are scary, man. Yeah, you know, like where it has the massive waves and you're in tubes or something and you're just kind of floating along? Well, you thought I said twos. So I know. I, I actually did too. I thought you said twos wave, wave pool. No, dude, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm bagging on your your thick Minnesota act. Tube. They have that at the Mall of America. A wave they, they used to, yeah, and you have to like you like try to fight the waves to get as yep. close as you possibly can. I don't, I don't, I don't need that aggravation. I <laughs> did not know that. I've <laughs> never I, needed that kind of aggravation. I always wanted to try what Josh was talking about, where he could kneeboard or surf and stuff. Yeah, it sounds You've never like done a, that. No, that surprises me because you're so into snowboarding. I, I thought maybe you'd see that at a water park and go, oh yeah. That's me all day. The one time I went to Florida, we tried to go surfing, and it was just way too hard to stand up. Yeah, I know there's a joke in here somewhere, but I tried surfing once, and I couldn't get up either. <laughs> I, I just, I just yeah. couldn't do it. Yep, yep. My brother saved a child from drowning. It was pretty dramatic stuff. This was at a friend's pool. Big family, and well, not family, a, a friend's get-together. It was We were probably, my brother and I were probably... 17 maybe and uh our dad and his buddies got together to drink all day long poolside and play cards and so my brother and i were we're the oldest kids there 
And then there was, you know, a couple of 10-year-olds, a couple of 6-year-olds, you know, my dad's buddies' families. And uh, this was an above-ground pool. And my dad and his buddies, some of them with kids, some of them with not, were paying little attention to the pool, you know. I had a grandmother who, if we were ever at a pool, all she did was pace around that pool, keeping an eye on every single solitary child to make sure they are never in jeopardy at all. That wasn't the same vibe at this house party. <laughs> My dad and his truck driving bros are just blasting Budweiser and playing cards, not paying attention at all. So luckily my brother and I were there because my brother and I were kind of effing off doing this or that. And we look over, we just happen to look over and there's a, oh, let's say if we were 17, this kid was nine or something. Just on the very bottom of the pool, motionless. It's terrifying. Yeah, yeah that's awful. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. And my, I mean, and my brother and I kind of looked at each other like, "Holy!" My brother goes into the pool, down to the bottom, scoops up this kid. Once he gets the kid up out the drink, the kid starts, you know, coughing up water. And you know, after ten minutes, he's okay. None of the adults witnessed any of this. Oh no! <laughs> not oh. even when the kid is being brought up out of the pool, and we're not sure if he's alive or dead. And my brother lies him on his back to barf up chlorine. <laughs> None of the dudes, none of the dads saw a thing. Oh, I would have lit them up. <laughs> Still to this day, when we tell the story, the dads who were present, who are now 85 years old, go, no, I don't remember anything about that. <laughs> well, of course you don't. You were beer bonging and playing <laughs> playing Texas Hold'em or whatever. It was just, I mean, the kid, the kid damn near died. I mean, he very easily could have died if my brother and I wouldn't have been wandering around, you know, somewhere at this party. Dang, that's scary. I almost died at the beach trying to impress chicks. You know, a lot of guys probably have a story about how they almost died trying to impress a girl, you know? <laughs> I bet. Oh, yeah, you, you absolutely. Do, you do some dumb stuff sometimes trying to impress a girl. Oh, God, I, and I think mine was extra stupid. Well, there were two of them, and both of them happened at my neighborhood beach. My neighborhood beach could have been the last thing that I ever saw in my life twice. Uh, one was where I jumped on the moving train. That was real smart. The train is creeping through town. That's the, that's the setup in my hometown. The train comes right down Main Street. And, uh, you know, of course, it slows down. I don't know. We were seventh graders or something. And here comes, and we're walking around with some girls and trying to be cool. And here comes the train, and it slows way down as it goes through town. Well, I jumped on the damn thing. Hey, look at me. Look at what a, a badass I am. I jumped on the freight train. And people are laughing. Oh. What I didn't realize is how quickly those some bitches accelerate once <laughs> once they want to get out of town. And there was a brief second there where it was jump or go to South Dakota or wherever. <laughs> the, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Or I would have, I mean, and I came real close to punking out and just trying to hang on. And God knows where I would have ended up or if I would have made it even, I probably, maybe I would have been killed along the way. I don't know, but I threw myself off the friggin' train, down into the ditch. But the uh, the other time where I tried to uh, impress the girls and almost died was swimming related. Again, my, I was never a good swimmer. We were much, we, maybe like fourth grade or something like that. I was trying to impress a group of girls by swimming under the dock and coming out the other end and sure. then going back under. Oh yeah, that's cool, yeah. <laughs> But the wake was coming in. It was a windy day, and so I would go under the dock, and I could not make it out the other end. How simple and stupid is that? But I couldn't do it. I, I, I ended up having to pull myself up and picture me under the dock. I can't get out from under the dock because of the wake. So I'm, I'm directly under the dock. I'm pulling myself out of the water just enough so my lips could catch a breath. I mean, I was drowning underneath the dock. Could not get out from under it, no matter how I, hard I tried. And I'm sure nobody had any idea. No, absolutely not. <laughs> they might have been thinking, wow, this guy can hold his breath for a long yeah. time. And I remember thinking, Jesus balls, I'm going to drown underneath this friggin' dock. And the, I mean, how wide is the dock? Four feet? Yeah, yeah. something like yeah. that. I, yeah. could not, I could not get out from under it. Like on maybe my 10th try, I got out from under that damn thing. How stupid is oh, that? Oh, jeez. Yeah. No wonder you don't swim anymore. By the time by the time I got out from under the damn thing, the girls were watching something completely different. Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm talking uh -huh. about? They had completely lost interest. They had no idea. Well, what's he doing under there? Who cares? <laughs> I saw two guys in a row immediately fail trying to press a girl with a mo impress a girl with a motorcycle. There's mm. a few girls there, and one guy, he got a relatively new bike, and 
he thought, I, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to peel out and I'm going to do a wheelie. And these girls are going to want to get on the back of this thing and go home with me. And so uh, he does that, and he went ass over tea kettle and fell immediately. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it it was a little bit before he got up, and I thought, oh, no, he's dead. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's dead. He was fine. And another guy's like, God, let me show you how it's done. He got on the bike and just fell to the side. I've oh, never seen anything like that. That's so much worse. It's like he forgot to do something. <laughs> and he to was, go? <laughs> so we had to go help lift it off him. I've never seen anything like that in my life. That's amazing. It's like he just froze up. Went straight down, and that was it. <laughs> That's great. The guy that tried the wheelie, he was off the hook at that point. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least he kind of yeah. moved a handful oh. of feet. Yeah. Winter Penis in Summer Jesus has texted the program, and he says, I was so desperate to impress chicks. I did well in school, and I got a high-paying job. No, just kidding. I'm a failure. <laughs> <laughs> There's a time in college where I wanted to impress this girl. It was right beginning of freshman year, and we were... You know, drinking in the dorms, and she mentioned how she well, she goes, hey, we should go for a jog tomorrow morning. And I thought, well, all right, well, that'll be... You know, I was still in relatively good shape at that point, 18 years old. And then uh, we start jogging, and I'm violently hungover at that point. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I was a captain of the cross-country team. So I was like, oh, this isn't going to be... This is a run. This is not a jog. <laughs> and I didn't want to, like, admit defeat and say, like, oh, we, oh this is too far. Let's slow down and walk. I kept going. Got to a point where... We but like mile three, I was violently throwing up. God dang. <laughs> mile three? Yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't dude. make it to mile one, so I'm impressed I, by again, that. Again, I was eighteen, you know, I was still yeah, relatively good high school athlete shape, so that wasn't that but just it was just horrifically throwing up. <laughs> Gamer Jesus said that uh, it's not him, but he works with a guy who blew his back out by squatting way too much trying to impress a girl at the gym. <laughs> I've never Man. uh even when I used to go to the gym a lot, I never tried anything to impress a girl. Like, you know, there were some of those guys that would flex in front of the mirror or uh-huh. the real loud grunters. That's impressive. <laughs> That's so funny because I've never once, like, noticed a guy at the gym, like, working out and been like, oh, look at how strong he is. <laughs> well, HVAC delivery Jesus, uh, he jumped off a roof into a pool to impress oh, a girl. We used no. to do that at a buddy's house, which was fun. Uh, <sighs> but unfortunately, his nuts got smashed. Uh, and once he hit the water. Oh, oh no. It's tough to come back from that yeah. one. Uh, he said then, they got hit so hard he surprised he was able to reproduce. <laughs> yeah. And then you do that movie, you pretend like it didn't hurt, like, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. But you're secretly just dying inside. I remember the first time I realized water could hurt when you jump from a decent distance. I just never, never once dawned on me. <laughs> I thought, well, if you fall in the water, you'll be fine. Yeah. It's yeah. water. Let me guess. Yeah. Cliff jumping. Cliff jumping in Ely. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that does hurt a little that bit. That will knock the living hell out of you. Uh, yeah, that's that was the biggest part of it. It was it was just the shock. Yeah, you like, better. I was totally clueless. You better hit it right. <laughs> One of my best friends growing up was the guy who would do anything to impress a group of girls from the time we were in first grade all the way until we were fully grown. And someone just said something about uh, cliff, uh, not cliff diving, uh, jumping off the roof of a house. <sighs> This was so, so close to the end of this stupid bastard's life. Right after high school let out, big friggin' party, big house party. The house had a pool, and this buddy of mine, he was just on edge all night, all night. He was on edge, and I, and I knew him well enough to know why he was on edge, uh, because he wasn't getting the attention he thought he deserved from the girls at our high school. Towards the end of high school, he wasn't having much luck with the ladies, and this this frustrated him. And, and his way of trying to gain them back was to do something stupid. So I remember being at this party holding the with the solo cup in my hand and looking up at the roof of the house, and there he is. Oh, no. And I, kn- I knew it. I, he's going to jump off the roof into the friggin' pool. And I remember hollering at him. Don't friggin' do it. Just get the F off the friggin' roof because it was a pretty good distance from the edge of that house to the edge of that pool. And, of course, you just never know what's going to happen. Maybe you trip. Maybe you... Yep. And it just... I, I gave up. I, I hollered and hollered at him to get down. But I said, you know what, to myself, it's your friggin' your life. And here he comes off the side of that pool. And... His skull missed the edge of that pool by a friggin' hair. Dude. 
and it was it was just one of those moments where I said, "We are friggin' idiots around here, just idiots." And when he hit the water, he came out of there like he just scored the winning run in the World Series. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and a lot of us were so tired of his bit at that point. He got very little reaction. He didn't even get the reaction that he so desperately needed. I think everybody had that friend, right? Good or a couple Lord. of friends. They would do absolutely anything. One of the guys, I, I was in a very similar situation, and I remember being super dramatic about it with my friend because we all knew, yeah, we get it. You know, you're not afraid of anything. You're not, you won't back down from anything. You don't need to prove yourself and... So we were, there was a school not too far away from us, and we would climb up there and just mess around, throw stuff off the top, things like that. This is maybe seventh grade, and he wanted to jump between buildings. There oh, was God. like a maintenance building next door, and it was a decent jump. And so I was pleading with him, please don't do this. And I got super dramatic, like, think about what your mom would say if you fell and you got injured <laughs> or worse, you died. You know, you've got a little sister who looks up to you of a future. <laughs> I was doing everything I could to try and reason with him. And uh, I thought, I'm really getting through to this gentleman, mm -hmm. finally. And then all of a sudden, he just launched off the building. He cleared it no problem. It was totally fine. And I thought, well, uh -huh. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I thought for sure we were going to watch our good friend die that night. Ah, man. Jeez. Yeah, this buddy of mine, he was the same guy. Once we got a little older, if we ever had a keg party, none of this uh, two of us are carrying the keg into the house. He's carrying it by himself, even though he doesn't have near the strength to accomplish such a thing. He always had to be the guy that, the guy that carried the beer keg in all by himself. And one time it was, you know, he had to go up a set of stairs, down a set of stairs. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. With, a, with a full barrel of beer. Just to show everyone, look, I'm not just your average. I remember one of those St. Cloud State parties. He's carrying a friggin' full keg down the stairs. It's killing him. You can <laughs> tell by the look on his face. He's killing him. But he had to show everyone, especially the women. We br He brings it down. He sets the keg down. And he walks away. Five minutes later, I found him. I said, well, how are you feeling? He goes, I'm good. I'm good. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> I mean, he must have torn every muscle he had in his body. But he had to be that guy. I had uh, I had that backfire on me once where when we were moving as kids, um, you know, we're all helping move in. And I had just grabbed a ton of stuff because I wanted to impress my parents and the rest of the adults in the commune we were moving in. Sure. Yep. And so I loaded up, and I'm thinking, they're going to be so impressed with my strength and my determination <laughs> and, and my willingness to help out. And my aunt, she's like, ah, the lazy man's load, huh? And it oh. just crushed my spirit. <laughs> she thought that was me being lazy because I didn't want to make a bunch of trips. Oh, man. And I thought, no, fair. look how strong I am. <laughs> look Gosh. how much I'm carrying. It sticks with me to this day. <laughs> oh, oh, man. You're strong, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being lazy. You are a big, strong guy. I mean, you're a big guy. I'm a big guy, big, big strong, strong guy. Big, strong guy. Here's the deal. What day is it? Wednesday on the program. We thank you for joining us. It's National Beach Day. I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, not really my style anymore just to sit at a beach. We tried the nude beaches, you know, 25 years ago down there in Jamaica. That's more my speed now, I think. Yeah, I never made it to that side. Um, we looked for the hidden beach, nude beach, supposedly in Minneapolis. Never found it. Or if we did, there was never any action there. I'll meet you at the nude beach. Not at the regular beach. Although, let me tell you something. If you ever go on some kind of a work trip and there's a nude beach, uh, be be aware there is a chance you might end up seeing a co-worker co at the nude beach. I had that experience <laughs> when we all went down there. You know, because we had radio people, we had uh, promotions people, we had engineers. And I'm, you know, intoxicated as hell. And I ran into one of our engineers at the nude beach. You remember that, don't you, Josh? I do. Oh. That was cool. Hey, oh, hey, Donnie. Oh, hey, Nick. There we are. Both of us standing there naked. <laughs> it can happen. It can happen. And we never we never mentioned it again when we got back to work. We never it's talked probably about good. it. probably good. I have very vague mem memories of it, but I guess, uh, I don't know, we both played by the rules. We didn't say a word about it after we left that joint. Here's the deal. Brad Ryder and Randy Shaver are going to join us a little bit later on the program. We'll take a break. Come right back on the half Ass Morning Show. There's a douchiness to them. The 93X half Ass Morning Show. 
Hey, Minnesota. CJ Ham here. Huddle up for a second. You need someone to go to extra yard when your furnace or AC is out? Give the ball to the certified pros at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. They've been at it for 90 years. Ready? Break. It's savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning State Fair Specials. Deals on deals on deals. Savings from $30 on a tune-up all the way up to $950 on a new cooling system. Visit standardheating.com slash offers for details on all their State Fair deals. Standard Heating, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930. Half-Assed Morning Show. 93X. Are you currently enjoying the show on the Stitcher app? Then... You need to know Stitcher is going away on August 29th. Yep, going away, as in kaput, gone, dead. Rest in peace, Stitcher, and thanks for 15 years of service to the podcast community. So switch to another podcast app and follow this show there. Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Stupid news on the half-assed morning show. You know, we were just playing that old Def Leppard song, uh, Pour Some Sugar By Damn Upon Me. A song that never needs to be played again, but, you know, these things happen. I got a text message from a listener. And he says, Do the drums in Pour Some Sugar On Me sound like two tennis shoes in a dryer, or is it just me? Oh, I guess I've never noticed. Like the snare drum. I, I responded with yes. Can you play a little more of that, Wapple? Specifically uh, the snare drum. It does sound like two tennis shoes in a dryer. D- should I help find this? Or I, I can. Right. That's a pet peeve of mine, Josh. Did you know that? What's that? The snare sound. Well, you loved the album St. Anger by Metallica. <laughs> and a lot of people commented on how much they enjoy Lars's drum sound on that record. I cannot stand it when I go see a live band. And the snare drum sounds like a bag of dimes being struck by a boot heel. <laughs> I can't stand that. There are ways to tune. Your, you do not have to sound like the snare drum in a marching band. I agree with that. And I also feel the same about the kick drum. If it's too muddy and mushed and you can't really tell, I, I don't like that either. These are real things, Ashley. We don't appreciate you saying, uh, sure, um, okay. These are real Whatever. problems. They're real problems These that are we real problems that nobody's addressing. <laughs> Two tennis shoes and a dryer. That's very clever. All right. We're going to go this way now with the stupid news. Wapple knows this one. He does. I bet you he does. Six and three is nine. Nine and nine is 18. Look over there, brother, and see what I've seen. A hidey, hey. Go ahead, Wapple. Hidey, 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 No, you're singing <laughs> two different songs from the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're trying to go Minnie the I, Moocher. I was going Minnie the Moocher. No, no, no. I'm yeah. talking hidey, hey. Baby, don't you want to go? Now you know where I'm going with this? Kind he doesn't of? know. Back to that same old place. Sweet home, Chicago, from the Blues Brothers. Chicago hasn't been that sweet of a place to live lately, from what I'm told. Like a lot of other places, it's been overrun with violent derelicts. And this ain't so sweet right here. A Chicago TV news station was robbed at gunpoint while they were reporting on a string of robberies in town. Oh, gosh. I feel bad they're robbed, but I do enjoy stories like this. Man. You got to just be the uh, reporter who's covering sex parties in town. Uh, And then a sex party breaks up right there in the middle of the broadcast. (laughs) What a drag. Chicago TV news crew robbed at gunpoint while they're reporting on a string of robberies. This was a Spanish language station by the name of Univision Chicago. They've... They've gone ahead and said that a reporter and a photographer were filming just before 5 a.m. Monday, a couple days ago. They were on Chicago's west side. Three masked men with guns walked up on them. And these effing garbage-ass human beings snatched their television cameras and such. Those are pricey. I would think so, yeah. These television folks were filming a story about robberies in the neighborhood that was slated to run on the morning news show. 
The footage they shot was in the stolen camera, so the story never made it on the air. <laughs> and I bet their boss was a dick about oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely was. Didn't want to hear any excuses about being robbed. You let us down. This is the entertainment industry. In some of these cases where some of these news organizations now they bring security with them for things like this. Yeah, that's probably smart. That's mentioned here in the story, Cubby. Some of the local television news stations over there are looking into assigned security for their live on the scene folks. Hmm. Well, nobody got hurt in this disaster. What it's- if they stole the camera not to like pawn it off, but to like make a movie. They make a documentary about their life. They make a documentary about stealing a news camera. Yeah, about, about how it's rough to be a robber. They're just trying to do their jobs. Three men drove up in a gray sedan and a black SUV. They pointed their guns, they swiped the cameras, and they drove smooth off. This was the second robbery this month involving a Chicago news crew. A photographer from some other channel there in town was assaulted and robbed on August 8th while preparing to cover a news conference. That's nice. This kind of thing, you know, where they're recovering the string of robberies and then they get robbed. Last year, you may remember in California, there was a a reporter who was reporting on this dangerous intersection in Los Angeles, how bad it is, how many crashes. And there was a huge crash right behind (laughs) him as he's in the middle of the report. Half me. It's a good timing right there. If you were a reporter, would you just like record your like record yourself? Yeah, I was standing on the side of the street and then all of a sudden they stole my camera. That would be like your clip. Yeah, but I wouldn't pan down to the urine in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a face shot for sure. Hey Wapple. I want to make something clear. I dig your vibe that you were heading down the route of Minnie the Moocher. I dig that. (laughs) I don't blame you for having that song on your brain because really, honestly, I think Cab Calloway's performance of Minnie the Moocher in the Blues Brothers movie, top five performances in the history of of music. So good. It's beautiful what he came up with. I love when it just kicks in and then he starts dancing and everything. Wasn't he good? I mean, he was good. He was so charismatic. Didn't he rip off the the suit and then he had the tux or something underneath? Well, that was was like... that was like a a goofy effect in the movie where, you know, they're dressed in their dirty Blues Brothers uniforms, but mm-hmm. but yet in the scene they uh, they look all polished and beautiful. That I don't know how to explain that. That was just like a some kind of an illusion in the movie. If you don't know what we're talking about, you failed in life. Oh. You have failed <laughs> that you don't know the Blues Brothers or specifically Cab Calloway's performance of many of the moocher in the Blues Brothers, but you probably already know that your life is a failure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wapada, da, 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 da. I'm going to be singing this song all day. If you have a minute, there's a video making its way up and down the internet. It's equal parts adorable and frustrating. When you watch it, you'll understand. The deal here is uh, cops and... Is everyone okay? Yeah. Yep. My pen just bumped the microphone. You are a renowned microphone bumper. I'm a Mm -hmm. bumper. Usually it's your water bottle. Usually my water bottle, yes. The ice in the water bottle especially. That gets pretty loud. Mm -hmm. What I was saying was cops in San Diego arrest... Oh, oh my no. God! Oh, Dude, my bad. No, it's uh, it's become a thing now. Everyone's <laughs> crashing into. The- it's contagious. <laughs> the, the, the springs on here are so loud. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I feel like we could turn that into like a musical instrument and use it in the band. Cops in San Diego arrested a moron who allegedly stole a bicycle from a. Well, it's not allegedly. I think we watched it in the video, but I'll stick with the uh, with the script. Cops in San Diego arrested a moron who allegedly stole a bicycle from a garage while also making friends with the bike owner's dog. You're so cool. Come here. Because you're the coolest dog I've ever known. I love you too. Where's your dad? Where's your dad? No, no. Leave your garage open. Dad! Where are you? I love you too. (laughs) You know, it's his delivery (laughs) is so strange that it almost seems put on. 
It's almost too much for a dude. You know, he must have been high or drunk or oh, something. He's so but stoned. Yeah. He is so ripped. <laughs> that is the audio. You know, this this uh, this fella with the garage full of bicycles, and one of them got stolen by jackass here. Uh, he had a security camera that had very clear audio, and that's that's the audio of the dude talking to the dog while he's stealing the bicycle. So the cute part is how sweet this big old golden retriever was, snuggling up on the moron and trying to make friends. The frustrating part is, of course, that this total bro-looking douchebag just walks up on somebody's garage and steals a bicycle. That last sound effect, I felt it in my brain. (laughs) (laughs) Cops in this neighborhood said they received a, quote, invaluable anonymous tip which helped arrested, uh, which helped arrest this dude bro. His name wasn't made available. The only info on the bro is that he's 42 years old (laughs) and still stealing bicycles out of garages when he has too many drinks or too many joint sticks. 42. The Golden Retriever goes by the name of Ace. And the cops. It's a solid dog name. Yeah. Yeah, especially if it's uh, dedicated to that of Ace Fraley. The cops said, We're thrilled to report the bicycle is back home, much to the delight of Ace, who is a very good boy. This success underscores the power of community collaboration. Thank you for helping keeping our city safe. The bicycle was a slick-looking setup, worth about thirteen hundred bucks. Don't you know this bicycle? Whoa, was a cool bike. Got the E8 ball on there, cool color. Thought the seat was kind of dorky, but outside of that, it was a sweet bike. Surveillance video from Ace's house, like I said, recorded the bro taking the bicycle out the garage. But he came back in, you know, uh, because he noticed how sweet this golden retriever was. Ace, you know, walked up on him and wanted to make friends. And you could hear in the audio, he's talking nice to the dog. You're the coolest dog I've ever known. I love you, too. You're a sweetheart. You want to come (laughs) home with me? This puke really is lucky he didn't get a baseball bat upside the noggin. Definitely. Yeah, he wasn't quiet. No. And what the hell? The, there was a door wide open at this house, too. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the hell. And they had a bunch of bikes. Yeah, they had a lot of bicycles. Uh, good guard dog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if I looked at that video, I was like, gosh, darn it, Ace. Well, he did distract them. You know, maybe uh, Dad just uh, wasn't as alert as he usually is. You can hear him ask Ace, the golden retriever, where's your dad? And the dog rolls over. He starts giving the dog belly rubs. Your dad shouldn't have left the garage open. Yeah, his fault. (laughs) And even when the dude rode away on the bicycle, Ace is standing at the garage door with his ears up as if he's saying, you know, where are you going, bro? (laughs) Thought we had a good thing going here. We we were doing so well right from the start. Come back and play some more, dude, bro. It's cute. It's a funny video. I love the interaction with the dog, but I I also want to punch this guy in the friggin' (laughs) face. Well, damn. Next up in the stupid news, we got a married couple who must have failed sex ed. They had to have failed sex ed or it was never offered to them. This is difficult to believe, but, you know, there's all types out there. By God, there is. There's folks who know what a great performance Cab Calloway put up singing Minnie the Moocher (laughs) in the Blue. And there's folks that don't know. A Chinese couple, they've been pumping away at each other like it's prom night for four years trying to have one of those babies, and it it hasn't been working. They went ahead and saw a doctor. The doctor who must have thought she was being pranked, the doctor had to tell them the reason there were no babies being made is because they've been doing it all wrong. They're not having sex correctly. At least, not if you want to reproduce. This married couple is 26 and 24 years old, and (laughs) apparently, this entire time, they've been partying in the backyard. 
She doesn't even know how great it can be. They've been partying in the backyard, Cubby, for four years. That's he pretty good. might be let down, but... Well, it doesn't make sense because the babies come out of the butt. <laughs> <laughs> so why wouldn't it start that way? What the, the doctor world? dumped an examination on the wife, a full exam on her downstairs parts. And through that examination... The doctor noticed that the wife was a, a virgin. Oh, it, it, yeah, her hymen was still intact. Ah! I knew somebody was going to use that word today. <laughs> I woke up knowing it. She is a virgin in the front, clean as a whistle. <laughs> there was also an examination. There was also an examination of what they call here the anus. <laughs> and apparently there were a few miles that had been put on that area. <laughs> I bet. Four years. Four years Dude. just going at it. Dude. When the doctor talked to this wife, she said, yeah, you know, sex was usually painful every, every time. How's this? <laughs> the doctor says, how is the sex? And she says, hey, it hurts like a son of a bitch. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but we do it a lot. <laughs> I can't walk that great, but you know. <laughs> Sitting is yeah. impossible. I don't like long car rides. <laughs> So these two apparently had been mistakenly having anal sex for four calendar years. But but the wife was a trooper. She and her husband just gave her hell. No. Hoping for a baby. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. We're gonna have one of those babies, by God, if it kills me. <laughs> I wonder, you know, this doctor, I wonder how many things she tried or tried because you probably are never gonna think that's what's going on in the bedroom. I think nobody is that clueless on something like this. There's no way. Yeah. I think that because it's such an obvious reason it's not working out, I would never come up with something like that. No. Like, Wait a minute, you're doing it how? <laughs> and you thought that was going to work? How do you not laugh? Although I did go to school with a girl who thought that you could get pregnant through oral. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. She assumed. I, I don't know. I, those... like, I can't expand on it, but mm -hmm. if, if you did it a certain way, she provided and something happened. That you could get pregnant by. That. Sure. Like one of those urban legends, too. Like, I remember one big one, and there was my high school. You couldn't get pregnant if they had sex in a hot tub because it was too hot. Really? Oh, I'd heard that before, too. Yeah. I did not. I'm glad I missed that one. Okay. So the doctor, like you guys already said, holding in a laugh the entire time, I would imagine. <laughs> the doctor handed these two a sex education handbook and threw them out of the building. You imagine the laughs those doctors had in you know one of the back rooms or something like oh you guys aren't gonna believe this one. Oh yeah <laughs> sound of jesus brings up a good point we don't want them to reproduce <laughs> true <laughs> or maybe the guy knew the entire time but he just oh. didn't want to have a baby <laughs> oh look at you that oh that could be true a couple people have been texting in saying this guy's a genius <laughs> Referring to what you just said, Dana. Now, a few months later, so the doctor gives him a sex ed handbook, physically throws him out of the building. A few months later, the couple came back to see the doctor again, and by God, they had followed her orders, and they've got a baby on the way. It worked. Yay. Front door sex made him a baby. I think at that point, okay. I'd find a new doctor. I wouldn't be able to show my face back in that place again. I'm with you on that one. I have questions, though, because I want to know if they thought that was like the accurate entryway. Well, obviously they did. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess I, I want to know if like they also did other acts. Her thinking that like he's they're having sex the regular way because usually you don't do other sex acts if you're hit, if you're doing like backdoor style because of like sanitary reasons and hygiene. So I want to know. Well, you're mi you're missing something that we already covered, uh, and you you're the one who had to use filthy language when discussing it. The, the hymen was still intact. They weren't partying in the front yard at all. I was talking, I was thinking more like, like, uh, uh oral sex? Face stuff, yeah. Face <laughs> stuff? Yeah like, yeah, like oral sex. All right, I'm not sure I'm following where you're going with this, but they made a baby. Hmm. Ugh. The doctor ended up saying couples so lacking in general knowledge are very rare. Yeah, I bet. Although I have a cousin who obviously still doesn't have a handle on birth control. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my my wife, she has a sister, same boat. He just walks in a bar room and two or three gals are knocked up, man. Fertile. 
Oh, oh, oh I, I, now I understand what you mean, Ashley. Yeah. And and we're, that says we shouldn't talk about it any further. Okay. But I understand what you where you were going with that. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess I could I could be more clear in case anyone else is confused. Ashley's wondering if all they're doing is partying in the backyard. Is she also providing oral? And if so, that's not the most sanitary thing on planet Earth, I think, is what you were trying to say. Yes. The order is very important. Yes. <laughs> For some women. Boy, I'll tell you what. There's plenty of people that are texting in saying that guy knew exactly what he was doing. You're onto something, Dana. <laughs> Could be true. I'd never considered no, that. Either. I just assumed they were both dumb. <laughs> just, uh, he had her fooled. Until they made that trip to the doctor. Now, thanks a lot, Doc. I've got a child to care for. <laughs> you had to blow up my spot, didn't you, man? <laughs> now, before you head out the door for work wearing your butt plug, because I know some of you do, before you dedicate yourself to your butt plug for the day, for the work day, you might want to listen to the results of this year's study that Josh did all the research for himself. It was exhausting. <laughs> the title of Cubby's research project is this. Hospitalizations for foreign objects in the can are on the rise. Hmm. Subtitle party poopers. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised when we had a conversation about butt plugs, how many people had texted in saying, I'm wearing one right now. Right. Or, uh, mostly women, uh, maybe all women, I don't remember, saying, yeah, I, I wear one to work regularly. Ah, <laughs> yeah, because it's the it's a pleasurable thing for some people. It's a dirty little secret. Right. Do you remember, okay, now that I mean, there's obvious, an obvious risk of pregnancy, but even yeah. so, they still go through with it. <laughs> remember now, I think I'm remembering this correctly. <laughs> When, one of the last times we talked about wearing a butt plug to work, we had a dude text in who said, yeah, I, uh, I'm on a construction site right now, and I got mine cooking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of butt plugs, too, we met a lot of cool people at the fair last Friday, and one of them was... Uh, <laughs> what the hell that is that was that a weird to transition. Yes. <laughs> but no, I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Uh, we met aid worker Jesus, and he was there with the, his wife and his kid, and he goes, I listen to the show every day, and he goes, but... I swear, anytime my wife walks in the room, you guys are talking about butt plugs. Well, I told she didn't just walk in the room. <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking of... <laughs> yeah, that wasn't bad transition, wasn't it? <laughs> speaking of... Speaking, speaking of, of butt plugs, we're at the fair. <laughs> speaking of a-holes, those people that stop by to talk to us at the fair. <laughs> that was weird. You said, speaking of butt plugs, we met a lot of people at the fair. <laughs> by the way, everyone thank Josh for researching anally-based hospitalizations. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, dude. Hey, you're welcome. You know, it's, it's a labor of love. That's why you've been leaving early. <laughs> <laughs> It says here now nearly 4,000 people are hospitalized with objects in their bottoms every year. More often than not, it's a sex toy that folks can't shake loose from their pooper. Emergency room visits were analyzed. My damn, did you put in some work on this, Josh? Emergency room numbers were analyzed from 2,000 plus 12 smooth up to 20 plus 21 skis. And they found a hell of a lot of people who had limped into the hospital with some extra cargo riding in the back. So let's see who was most likely to be next based on Josh's research. The average age of the patients with something stuck in their can? 43. Josh, you're the nearest to 43, I think, in this room. No, oh, no, no, that'd be Dana. Dana. I'm 38. Dana is, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Price is Right rules. We're, we're, we're even. Yeah, right, we're even. Well, let's do it together. All right, that's fine. Suddenly, I, I don't know why, Josh, suddenly I was picturing you to be a much younger man. Well, you do still you look so youthful. Yeah, we're right there. I'm on the upper side of five years away from that, and you're at four, five years on the lower side. Yep. Nearly 78% of the patients were dodes. Does not surprise me. That actually does surprise that, me. That, that, yep, really surprises me. And 40% of these bastards, 40% of the people who came into the hospital with something lodged in their bottom, 40% of them had to be laid out for a stretch of time in the hospital. So it wasn't like the doctor just karate kicked the item out. 
from their tender bottoms and they were on their way home. Some of these folks had to spend the night or spend a couple of nights in there. They have to watch them go number two. Oh, yeah, they do. Well, they get to watch them go number two. <laughs> What do you mean? What are you talking about? Just to make sure everything's uh, 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 working right. Uh, working? Yeah, they usually make you a deuce before you leave. How the hell do you know this? My girlfriend used to work in hospital. Over half of the uh, folks. No, that's not where I'm going with this. Over half of the objects that got butt stuck, like I said, were sex toys. Um, some examples would be vibrators or anal beads or other toys, it says here. It doesn't surprise me that it would be more men because um, I think men are more like ashamed of it, so they're more likely to do it by themselves and have issues, but women aren't, so usually I, they have a partner if they're doing doing backdoor stuff. I always just picture, by, by picture, I don't mean like to be gross, I just mean I always assumed that women were the ones using the majority of the sex toys. Whether yeah, that be true. back yeah. or front, mm-hmm. back or front, one of the <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I was at a gal's place and she pulled something out of the top drawer and said, you want to see where I can put this? It's a thrilling moment in a young man's life. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Never seen it. Never once. What are you talking about? I've never seen it. A girl's never said to you, hey, dude, why don't you dial back and I'll just show you what I can do on my own. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely not like a compliment to my penis that they don't need it. It's just I've never known a girl uh, sexually who has used something like that. These things uh, can happen. I mean, I remember, holy smokes, I thought, you're going to put that where? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You got to plug that thing in? My goodness. <laughs> All right, so that they... would scare me if you had something you had to plug in. Yeah, me too. <laughs> So, uh, by damn, a lot of what they found were sex toys, but doctors also found things like balls. And I mean like tennis balls or bocce balls or disco balls. Bocce balls. They also found marbles (laughs) and drugs in people's butts. Um, We've talked about these here, a couple of the more infamous uh, butt-stuck situations. Over the last few months, a man had to be rushed into an emergency surgery situation after getting a can of deodorant stuck in his cornhole. Mm-hmm. A French senior citizen put a World War I artillery shell in his butt. The hospital had to be evacuated. It was a bomb scare situation. <laughs> Look out! He's gonna <laughs> fart! I swear to God, he's gonna fart! I got a bomb in my butt! <laughs> I bet if you pulled the guys that have had to go to the hospital for this, I bet all of them would pretty much say, like, why, well, why did you do it? Oh, I was bored. Yeah, I'm sure boredom comes into it. God dang it, Josh. I love this next story so much, but we are running low on time. Should we save it? Yeah, it'll be fun to have uh, something to look forward for tomorrow. All right. We're looking forward to some great stuff tomorrow. I've been wanting to tell this story for two days, but we start talking about butt play. Yeah. And the time Dana just- calls people nice enough to come visit us butt plug (laughs) if you get the five of us on the topic of butt play we will go on and on and on and on and other stories sacrifice for it sports on the 93x half-assed morning show what did you make of the the trade lance trade to dallas weird situation been a lot of weird situations over there in San Francisco. Just to leave it at that. But uh, you know, I'm happy Trey got another shot, man. How do you think San Francisco's handled those, those quarterback situations? How do you think they've handled them? <laughs> I think it's been messy. I'll, I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice way to put it. Oh, Cubby. I know. Audio from Josh's Ultimate Fantasy. Now Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. Kind of talking trash about his old club there in Las Vegas. What do you call the town he was in? Uh, San Francisco. San Francisco <laughs> playing yeah. for the 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> Josh, when I when I saw this, the, uh, the first thought I had was your fantasy, 100%. <laughs> well, did you see him uh, going up in the fighter jets? And he's wearing <laughs> yeah. like the jumpsuit and all that kind of stuff, the you know, sunglasses. Josh, I know you're not much of a fan of porno movies, but if there ever was a video that you were going to fall down and molest yourself to. It's got to be Jimmy Garoppolo in a fighter jet. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> Which is what you were just referencing. Yeah, he, he took a he took a ride in an F-16 fighter jet recently. Um, I mean, he had the thrill of his life. 
and there was a video of him, you know, getting into the suit, being trained on how to do this or that, then they put him inside the F-16. You must have thought about pulling your fly down, when for I Christ's sake. Some of those some of those pilots were, you know, talking about, hey, he could join us, man. He's got what it takes, that kind of stuff. Even they were in love with them. There's no way he could join them, but I think they were in love with the way he looks, too. Didn't they give him a call sign? Oh, yeah, what did they call I have him? it in here somewhere. Yeah, I forgot. They gave him a call sign when he was up there. Uh, F9, or uh, I'll get to it. G9? It nine G? It, one of us is correct. I got it in here somewhere. Yeah, nine Gs. Nine Something like that. Gs. Oh, uh, maybe because G for Garoppolo? I think Probably, so. Probably, yeah. Well, at any rate, uh, that's a cool. Is that up on our website? Yes, it is. Those are two of your favorite things, Jimmy Garoppolo and F and Fighter Jets. Yeah, it doesn't seem fair, does it? No, I thought doesn't. I was dreaming. Yeah, you could say, hey, did you see Jimmy G's porno? Well, that chick was hot in there. How about that? And I'd have to say, what chick? Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go real quick. One night after scoring 10 runs and bashing baseballs into the upper deck like it was a damn video game, the Twins lineup was pretty quiet last night. Cleveland beat them 4-2. to They went 0-9 for with runners in scoring position, stranded three runners on third base. Couple of solo dongs is all they were able to come up with. F and Royce Lewis hit another one. That's three nights in a row for him. Michael A. Taylor also donged out in the ninth inning, but Cleveland's bullpen was pretty effing good. They got one more with the Guardians. This game will be televised on Bally Sports around noon today. Oh, what the hell? Tanner Tanner Bibby. Oh, yeah, I saw him pitch earlier this year for the Guardians. Tanner Bibby. Uh, goes for Cleveland. Sonny Gray for the Twins. Much more to cover when Brad Ryder and Randy Shaver join us. Stay tuned for Josh's news report. There's a douchiness to them. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Hey, Minnesota. CJ Ham here. Huddle up for a second. You need someone to go to extra yard when your furnace or AC is out? Give the ball to the certified pros at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. They've been at it for 90 years. Ready? Break. It's savings on a stick season with standard heating and air conditioning state fair specials. Deals on deals on deals. Savings from $30 on a tune-up all the way up to $950 on a new cooling system. Visit standardheating.com slash offers for details on all their state fair deals. Standard Heating, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930. Half-Assed Morning Show. 93X. Are you currently enjoying the show on the Stitcher app? Then... You need to know Stitcher is going away on August 29th. Yep, going away, as in kaput, gone, dead. Rest in peace, Stitcher, and thanks for 15 years of service to the podcast community. So switch to another podcast app and follow this show there. Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Half-Assed Morning Show. 93X. Uh, we're coordinating with our FDOT partners, monitoring our roadways and our bridges to make sure they're safe for travel. Now's the time to heed those warnings and evacuate if you're in an evacuation area. Florida residents living in vulnerable coastal areas were ordered to pack up and leave oh. as Hurricane Adalia gained steam in the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And authorities warned of a catastrophic storm surge and destructive winds when the storm moves ashore this morning. It's projected to make landfall early today as a Category 4 storm with winds of at least 130 miles an hour. Rough surf in the Keys, flooded roads in Fort Myers Beach. The storm battering Cuba overnight. FEMA urging families to heed the evacuation orders and get out while there's still time. If you are in a storm surge warning area, it could mean just traveling 10 or 20 miles to get out of the most significant impact areas. The result could be a big blow to a state still dealing with lingering damage from last year's Hurricane Ian. Ian was responsible for almost 150 deaths last year. The Category 5 hurricane damaged 52,000 structures, nearly 20,000 of which were destroyed or severely damaged. On the island of Cedar Key, Commissioner Sue Colson joined other city officials with a message for residents who were under mandatory orders to evacuate. One word, leave, she said. It's not something to discuss. Here in Cedar Key, the businesses are boarded up. The sandbags are out here. They will have an absolute evacuation order in place. Gas will be off. Lights will be off later on this evening. Residents say they are worried. They won't have anything to come back to. State troopers went door to door in the area warning residents the storm surge could rise as high as 15 feet. If you do choose to stay in one of the evacuation zones, first responders will not be able to get you until after the storm has passed. The National Weather 
Weather Service in Tallahassee called the Dahlia an unprecedented event since no major hurricane on record has ever passed through the bay, budding the Big Bend. The hurricane season runs through November 30th, with August and September typically the peak. Well, I hope everyone uh, makes it all right, but man, that place sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our thoughts with um, some listeners who have been checking in from Florida saying, you know, they're doing what they can, but it sounds like it's going to be a bad one. A 27-year-old man in Indiana was arrested for attacking his friend and co-worker with a hammer while working at a sheet metal company. Mm. His friend. The Indianapolis <laughs> Metropolitan Police Department responded to a call about 7.30 a.m. August 20th, where the victim said he was at his workstation when he was suddenly struck in the back of the head and went unconscious. What the hell? He couldn't identify his attacker, but told investigators his other colleagues inevitably would have the scene, the assailant. The other employees on duty that day told investigators the victim was working at his station, which he shared with his best friend and co-worker Austin Hahn. When the suspect came up behind him unprovoked and all of a sudden started hitting him with a hammer. Several of their colleagues said Hahn and the victim had been the best of friends until an argument several weeks before the attack. One employee told police Hahn had apologized to the victim after the argument and everything seemed okay until Han allegedly decided to hammer the bejesus out of the victim. He then reportedly threw the hammer in the trash while calmly walking out the back of the warehouse. One employee who was out back and unaware of the situation said Han tossed the hammer into the trash can next to him, walked by, paused momentarily to pat him on the chest and say, S happens. <laughs> Dude, we got a crazy person here. <laughs> God. He taken into custody after being turned in by his mom. His, his mother turned That's him? That's great. Yeah. Right. He went to his mom's house, and she called the cops. Mom. <laughs> Not my problem. I, I did it again, Mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a 16-year-old girl allegedly stabbed another teenager in Washington, D.C. early Sunday during an argument over dipping sauce. Good. According to police, the teens, both from Waldorf, Maryland, ordered food at a D.C. McDonald's and then got into a car together. The two got into an argument over the sauces they had been given, which led to the stabbing. Officers took the 16-year-old girl into custody. Police said she had a knife on her when arrested. In court Monday, the teen arrested uh, claimed that the stabbing was done in self-defense. However, video evidence seems to suggest otherwise. Uh, police said this was all over sweet and sour sauce. Oh, they do have the best sweet and sour sauce. But I, I don't remember being... Like having that this hard as a teenage girl. It's rough, but usually not this rough. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Two New Jersey families are now homeless after a man intentionally set fires to their dwellings while looking for people he alleged committed cyber attacks against him. Oh, boy. Information from witnesses and surveillance video helped police identify 30-year-old Colin DeLuca as a suspect. However, DeLuca himself called police while driving about 12.15 a.m. last Wednesday. He claimed he wanted to confront people who were, quote, cyber attacking him, but since he couldn't locate them, he called police. Authorities initially didn't realize the first fire was suspicious because a dead squirrel was found with an apparent wire in its mouth oh. at a starting point. <laughs> they thought the squirrel started it. Oh. But investigators saw similarities after the second fire. The statement said DeLuca didn't know the residence of his victims. Uh, he then uh, was arrested. Police said he had items in his vehicle capable of starting a third blaze and more. Items that we found in the car that were extremely concerning. There was items in there that had potential to cause additional fires. One of the other issues we found in there was he was armed with a crossbow. Investigators say they do have information of what his motive could be, but offered no further details at the time of press writings. The no injuries were reported from the fire. He had a crossbow? He did. That's which is, pretty cool. That is cool. <laughs> uh, but uh, some people shouldn't have them, like this guy. My dad's got one of those. And, and another person shouldn't have them. Yeah, it. probably. <laughs> he just uses it in the backyard, though. And if, you know, there's ever, like, an apocalypse. He'll be good to go? Yeah, oh, yeah. A Colorado man's been charged with cyber-stalking his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend in Hawaii while repeatedly posing as a different ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Federal prosecutors said Monday, 53-year-old John Hart, who previously lived in Hawaii, was arrested Friday in Colorado. Using fake phone numbers and encrypted emails to hide his identity, an indictment alleges he created profiles for his girlfriend on dating and casual sex websites. He even sent two men looking to date or have sex with her to her workplace, among other things, to harass and intimidate her. If somebody feels like they're already deeply in the middle of a cyber-stalking situation, stop, 
don't give in to demands to send photographs or conduct sexual activity or send money. Just report it to the police at that point. Hart also told the new boyfriend, a resident of both Hawaii and Washington State, to break up with her and sent sex toys to the boyfriend's relatives with the ex-girlfriend's name on the order what? form. Wow. What, a, what a pathetic dork this guy is. He then repeatedly targeted himself, such as spray painting his car and the car of his ex-girlfriend as well, then leaving spikes near both of them and telling authorities the other ex-boyfriend was responsible. Oh my God. And police say this is a growing problem. We really are seeing more and more cyber stalking. People don't come forward, they don't want to report it, so we don't know the actual number, but we can say that we've actually been prosecuting a lot more of these cases recently. If convicted of all charges, he's facing decades in prison. My God. Congratulations, dude. You have the same maturity as far as relationships go as a fourth grader. I hope it was worth it, man. A Wyoming man was arrested in Utah after calling 911 for a tow truck, carjacking a vehicle, telling the victim they were going to die, running on the freeway, exposing his genitals, and more. A week ago today, 29-year-old Antoine Screevy called 911 reportedly to request his vehicle be towed, saying that his tires were punctured and he believed that people were stabbing them. Officers said they found no visible damage, but offered to help change his tires. Screevy refused, though, insisting his vehicle be towed, and then told officers his engine was on fire. It was not. <laughs> Screevy was warned about calling 911 for non-emergency purposes, and officers offered to write the uh, a non-emergency dispatch number down for him, but he declined. They then left the scene, but were quickly informed the man called 911 again. He seemed to be getting more agitated, so police drove back to the scene where they saw him flailing his arms in the sky and yelling, apparently, to no one. He then approached a passenger car and got in the, dri uh, rear, uh, the uh, rear seat behind the driver of the victim's vehicle. A second officer, who was still on the phone with Screevy, told him to get out. The officer heard Screevy telling the victim to go faster and they were going to die. According to the victim, he told them he was unarmed, but that he needed to get to the closest police station. When the victim pulled over, Screevy reportedly got out of the vehicle and tried to get into a second one, but that driver took off before he could get in. Eventually, police were able to take him into custody, but when they opened the back driver's side door of the patrol car, he reportedly pulled his pants and underwear down to his knees, exposing his weird genitals. Mm. <laughs> I don't know that for sure they were weird. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably were. It's I'm a good guess. I'm picturing they were weird. That's sick. A detective with the Miami-Dade Police Department was hospitalized last week after suffering an accidental self-inflicted gunshot wound inside a Florida tattoo shop. According to a police spokesperson, the detective was off duty when her gun accidentally discharged and struck her in the lower extremities. Police said she was airlifted to a Miami hospital. There were a lot of concerned officers, family members of that detective, we were told, also may have been here in the area. All of them concerned, but all of them feeling much better, knowing that, again, she is expected to be okay. It's unclear as to how the detective's gun was discharged, but police said the incident is under investigation. <laughs> ah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Two people dressed in dark colors, wearing masks, both dart into a busy street on a hill in San Francisco. One of them hauls a big orange traffic cone. They sprint toward a driverless car and quickly set the cone on the hood. The vehicle's side lights burst on and start flashing orange, and then it sits there immobile. They're a part of a group of protester vigilantes at war with driverless cars. The anonymous activist group called Safe Street Rebel is responsible for dozens of so-called coning incidents over the past few months. The group's goal is to incapacitate the driverless cars roaming San Francisco streets and a protest against the city being used as a testing ground for the emerging technology. I'm backing these fellas. All it takes to render the technology-packed self-driving car inoperable is a traffic cone. If all goes according to plan, it will stay there frozen until someone comes and removes it. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. Safe Street Rebel has cataloged hundreds of near misses and blunders with vehicles over the past few months. Even without traffic cones, the self-driving cars have run red lights, rear-ended a bus, blocked crosswalks and bike paths. In one incident, incident dozens of confused cars congregated in a residential cul-de-sac, clogging the street. <laughs> That's hilarious. The wow. They're just all showing up at the same place. And in a very sad incident, one ran over a dog. Oh, oh no. no. Okay. I'm now I'm then. pissed. Yeah, now I'm in with these guys. I just imagine them like sitting in like a secret 
dark bunker and then, like talking so seriously about the stop of these cars. Yeah, they just go up and cone them left and right. <laughs> I love how we know how to stop Teslas from taking over the world, though. Just throw a cone out. Well, these aren't Teslas, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, why are you going after Teslas directly like that, Wobble? That's just really the only automated car that I know of. The other day, Josh said to me exactly this. He said, Nick, we're not going to rest one minute until we put an end to these driverless cars. Now let's go get a bite to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I realized immediately what I had just done. Yeah. Complaints are up in St. Paul as wire thefts mean dark nights on city streets. There are nearly 38,000 fixtures in St. Paul, and neighbors say it only takes a few missing bulbs to illuminate a major problem. One resident said thieves ripped out the copper wires on his street in the city's north end. He also said he's called the city, and they told him he's not alone. A report outlines possible solutions, including keeping lights on all day, banding the welding access doors, and imprinting city property identification on the wire. Officials say, though the investments might be slowing the rate of theft, they're still playing catch-up. In the meantime, St. Paul residents are asked to call police if they see a working sign on a pole, but no city vehicle nearby. The biggest thing that we could really use the help from the public is that if anybody ever sees anybody working on the lights, if there is not a City of St. Paul vehicle right there that you can see, contact the police. Police are also asking <laughs> residents to send doorbell video to help collect evidence of wire theft. It's Kids Day at the Minnesota State Fair. $13 tickets for kids between the ages of 5 to 12. Lots of cotton candy vomit littering the streets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at the grandstand tonight, oh man, Young Gravy will be performing. I remember someone uh, someone saying something about Young Gravy coming to town. They were pretty pumped, whoever that was. Did they have him on Kids Day? That's just too good. Oh, What's is he, the problem? Is he on the dirty side? It just wouldn't really make sense. It doesn't make sense. Well, but he's, well, he's young. young. Yeah, they, yeah mm -hmm. I guess it'd be like and the kids doodle love box gravy. or Children something. love gravy. They love it. He has Young in the name. You, the fair promotion staff know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, true, true. They, they, their marketing staff is on, uh, how do the young people say it, point. Pablo will be broadcasting live today at the 93X booth located near the grandstand across from Sweet Martha's Cookies. The morning show, we're back Friday, 10 a.m. to introduce Rossley Fartcrocks the radio clown to the world. Uh, we, we are going to have some other clowns out there as we watch uh, Ashley get her face painted to look like a clown. She's going to be doing that for a couple hours. Ashley will face her fears of clowns by becoming one. Hopefully you can come see her in full clown makeup thanks to Destiny from mindful arts we appreciate her being willing to come out there since its premiere in 2009 archer has taken fans on a wild and unpredictable journey through the exploits of the self-proclaimed world's greatest spy sterling archer and his equally dysfunctional colleagues at the international secret intelligence service tonight the long-running animated comedy begins its 14th season on fxx the season will kick off with not just one but two back-to-back -back episodes both immediately available on hulu tomorrow Hulu. Cameron Diaz, 51. Ooh. Comedian Louis Black, 75. Man, I can't believe he's 75. Happy anniversary to Miller Lite Jesus from Miller Lite Jesus. Happy birthday <laughs> to End Dump Jesus, and that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. Put that ass. Put that ass. Put that ass. On the half assed morning show. Here in Miami, Luisa Rise and Ildemaro Vargas, Venezuelan countrymen and friends, have been having some fun with each other over the last couple days. Here's what Ildemaro did at the end of the bottom of the first inning. He drew a heart in the dirt out there at second base and then put an entire handful of gum out there for his buddy Luis Arise. He told me to watch for this before running out there for defense. Luis got out there, smiled, grabbed all the gum, maybe a piece for himself, and then realized this is too much gum. I can't just keep this in my pocket the entire half inning. He went over to the first base umpire, Nestor Seha, gave him the rest of the gum. So a little gift for the first base umpire and some fun there between Venezuelan brothers. Wasn't that about the cutest damn thing in the whole world, Cubby? Absolutely. It's what's, so cute. What's the other guy's name? Uh, Il Demaro Vargas? Yeah. I, I'm not too sure. Vargas. Plays for, uh, what was it, uh, for Miami? Yes, yeah, Miami and the Oh, Nash no, wait a minute. Uh, the, the Marlins and the Nationals. Arise, Arise plays for, the, for mm -hmm. Miami, and the other kid plays for the Nationals. If you didn't catch what was happening there, those two guys are big-time bros, and they're doing sweet things for each other. 
as they're coming on and off the uh, field during a ball game between the Marlins and the Nationals. They're drawing hearts in the dirt for each other. <laughs> funny. My they're part. leaving bubble gum on the base paths where we hear some bubble gum. They must really like each other. Let's uh, get her. Here comes uh, Randy Shaver. Uh, hello, ass man. Good morning. And the loneliest of them all, the lonely boy, Brad Ryder. Hello, Brad. Good morning. It's wonderful, wonderful again to have the both of you. I got a question from a listener for you, Randy Shaver. Okay. To start us off. Sure. A listener says, I'll be heading off to the Vegas of the Midwest here in a couple of days. Cedar Rapids, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> That's a great way to phrase that. That's what Ray I think Ray. of when I think of Vegas. Uh, Ray, stop Randy. by my statue and leave a flower at the base of my statue. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of what they're uh, curious about, Randy. Uh, the question is, Randy, have you any recommendations for me on places to see or eat? And where is your statue located? <laughs> uh, places to eat. Well, my hangout from high school still exists and it hasn't changed since 1975. And that's Leonardo's Pizza. Right. Oh, pizza, nice. In Cedar Rapids. Mm-hmm. So I would, re- if you want to go back in time to the 1970s with red leather boots and all that kind of stuff, uh, I would recommend that. That sounds great. I love it. I love it when they keep them joints the same. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yep. Where everything it hasn't changed one bit. My kids were like shocked um, when I showed it to them, but. Yeah, and, and then the food is good. Leonardo's Pizza. Sounds good. That yep. does sound sounds delicious. Yep. Do they still have a jukebox over there? I think they do, actually. You can play your old uh, hits by Steve Miller and Boss Skaggs and whatnot. <laughs> sure. Did it sure. used to be like a, a drive-in pizza place or something? It nope. looks like a drive-in. Nope. What, nope. are you, what are you looking yeah. it up on the internet or something, Wapple? Oh, of course. I gotta Stalker. look up the menu now. Oh yeah. I can't wait to talk about it. Leonardo's <laughs> yeah. Pizza. The, the young people still gather there? Uh, the, the the Kelly Kapowski's you know, I and, don't uh, <laughs> I don't think so. No, I think the uh the people who were young in nineteen seventy seven are the ones who still gather today. <laughs> And Brad Social Ryder. Anxiety Jesus looked up the menu, too, and he said the food there looks bomb AF. <laughs> yeah, it does. Bomb AF bomb. is what he says. I bet you can get some good comfort food in Cedar Rapids. Oh, I'm sure mm-hmm. you could get a bite to eat. And Brad Ryder sure. in Clara City, to hang out, you just lean up against a cow. <laughs> <laughs> against a hay bale. Against a hay bale. With your arms <laughs> folded after the satisfaction of a good day's work. We'd have to go to, we'd have to, go to Wilmer. Yeah, Wilmer. I've heard of that friggin' joint by damn I have. All right. Well, that's uh, uh, have a good time in Cedar Rapids. They didn't leave their name, but they're headed in that direction. They wanted some advice from uh, from old Randy. We well, have been getting a lot of questions, Randy, on if you've gotten any ass mans yelled at you while you're broadcasting. I've got, I had one, uh, I think it was on Friday of last week, and it was a very polite one. So that's the <laughs> only one that I've had so far. And now right. today's it, right? This is your last day broadcasting there? Today is my last day at the State Fair, correct. How happy are you? <laughs> Overjoyed. <laughs> you know, sometimes when like a wrestler, an Olympic wrestler, will retire, they leave their shoes like on the mat. You know, and when they walk off, <laughs> are you going to leave like your uh, your dress shoes at the barn I'm, as I'm you walk off? off? I'm, I'm taking off my care polo and leaving it on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cute. Nick did some foul <laughs> things with a fan with your face on it that he per- picked up at the State Fair on Monday. Well, I, sent, I saw that. I, I sent Randy that. a picture. I sent Randy a picture. I stopped by the Care 11 barn, and they and they uh, they hand out, um, uh, how, how do you say it in the booth? Uh, characters on a stick? How do you say it when you're on TV? Yes, Care characters on a stick. On a stick. Anyway, you can get a, a stick. You know, that's the gimmick at the State Fair. Ha ha, right. everything's on a stick. Right. Uh, you can have a stick in your hand, and at the end of the stick, it's Randy's face or Julie Nelson's face or Belinda Jensen or uh, all these. Uh, so right. I, I just took a picture of me holding Randy on a stick, 
And I, and I said, I will wait here as long as it takes to see you live in person. Like a creepy, a guy, I sent him like a creepy vibe. But, but Josh oh, is, it was a very creepy face on, that he was yes. uh, that he showed. Yeah. Yes, if it's, uh, as if I was a stalker fan. But Josh, uh, I, I didn't take pictures of this. I did some very foul things beyond that. You did. You got oh, creative uh, no. with your wow. face. You motorboated me, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we don't have those. Yeah, you motorboated me. <laughs> Um, what else is going on around? Oh, someone, you know, sometimes people misunderstand what we say on the radio. Someone just said, "Did Randy just say something about leather boots? What is he a swinger? No, leather booths. <laughs> yeah, Bo- booths. booths. Uh, like you sit in them. Yes, yeah. at the uh, at the joint there. A listener, th- a listener thinks Randy, when you retire, you should just leave your toupee on the desk when you find. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> what, if that's the case? what if your beautiful I hair will... was a toupee? I will do that my last night on TV. I will take <laughs> off the toupee, leave it on the anchor desk, and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bald, bitches! <laughs> instead of like a heartfelt goodbye, I'd love to see somebody that retires and does all this, you know, instead of saying goodbye on the air, just take off your mic, drop it, walk off. <laughs> exactly. F you, F you. The yeah. mic drop. You're just cool. Start roasting your core. <laughs> I got to like, get something do off the, my do chest. The, do the Christian lady. Leitner, point loser, 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 <laughs> winner. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if there's ever an official last day for Josh and I on this program, if we don't die first, if there's ever an official last day, you're going to hear some things. Oh, that would be awesome. You're going to hear some friggin' things. Oh, uh, and uh, one final note on Leonardo's Pizza uh, in yep. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, people are wondering how... It is that we haven't mentioned yet that that business has been in operation for 69 years. <laughs> there you go. 69. Still funny after all these years. <laughs> there you are. The Twins, uh, boy, they were looking like an offensive juggernaut on Monday night, and then last night they were kind of quiet, kind of neutered. A little bit, yeah. I mean, they had opportunities. They left a lot of guys on base last night, including a chance for... Royce Lewis to hit a third grand slam in three days Mm -hmm. in the first inning last night. But, um, yeah, I mean, you got to give Cleveland's bullpen some credit. They were tough. uh, Gavin Williams got hurt in that first inning and had to leave. And then uh, they got uh, some outstanding pitching the rest of the way. Classe did give up a home run in the ninth, but it didn't prove to lead to anything else, and the Twins ended up getting beat. So that lead now is back down to six. With one game left in this series against Cleveland before they go to Cleveland, I think next week. Yep. Right. And I think um, I think there's 29 games left, counting the uh, afternoon game today, left in the season. So, you know, every game's important, obviously, but this one could put them seven up with 28 to play, and that's that's a pretty good sized number to have to find a way to overcome. The Twins would have to really, I think we've said this before, they would have to totally collapse in order to lose this lead now. I mean, all they have to do is play 500 baseball. They're in pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. Yeah. Yep. 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position. 0 for 9. A couple of solo dongs. Lewis did hit a dong. He did. Just nobody else. Nobody was on base, but you're right. Three, three, three consecutive days with home runs from Royce Lewis, who's just having a great month of August, mm. without a doubt. It's nice to be and in a so, position and where. So was, I was just gonna say, it's, it's nice to be in a position where you don't have to panic over a loss or two. Right. Yeah. You know, like exactly. this, where you know you lose last night. It's right. like, ah, okay. Well, we'll go out and win today and be just fine. So. Right. Yeah. All you got to do is win series. Yep. And, and really, all you have to do is play 500. That's really all you have to do at this point. I mean, Cleveland would have to almost run the table in order to pass you if you play just 500 baseball. And, and Lopez has had a great August. I mean, he's won nine games this year. Four of them have come in this month. So last night was, you know, a pre- was a decent effort, just didn't get a lot of offense. I mean, yeah, and, he, he gave up know, some hits. It was a but quality start. Yeah, yeah he, it was a quality start. It, it wasn't bad. So no. he, he did enough for his club to get a victory. Six innings, three runs given up. You should be able to overcome that. Uh, today, uh, the rubber game, noon, televised on Bally Sports. 
Sonny Gray going to pitch against Tanner Bibby. Bibby is yeah, the this last guy, name. Yeah, this guy's been really good. I mean, for a rookie to have the kind of season he's had is pretty impressive. So should be a, a, a good way to finish the series, and then they'll meet again next week. Uh, some of our listeners have been texting in wondering why we don't have our faces on a stick at the 93X booth uh, because a few of them would like to turn those faces uh, in, uh, well, not turn them into, but maybe use them for their flashlights. <laughs> uh, That's why I said I'm very glad we don't have those. That would be, no, no, no. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad to me. They'd end up doing a lot of really dirty things. That's okay. That's I actually okay. would appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I think it's a compliment. my life. Oh, the twins, uh, Jumbotron folks, are in on this you know, you, you, this uh, bit, this ongoing bit where the Jumbotron, the scoreboard folks, have to be fun. I love it. Okay. I love it. It's great. I missed this on Monday night uh, when Rom- Ramirez, uh, Jose Ramirez, when he was up on the Jumbotron, uh, they, 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 they threw the verbiage up there, and it said, currently 1-0 and with a first-round TKO of Tim Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how long this is going to go. Is this going to be the new normal now, where every time you go to the ball game, the Jumbotron folks have yeah. some jokes? Seems that way. I hope so. I like it. That's all right. Keeps it fun. The douchebags in Denver who jumped on uh, the Rockies ball field and annoyed the hell out of uh, Ronald Ocuna Jr. of the Braves and anyone who might have been watching, uh, they've been arrested and cited. The two dickheads, both from Denver, were arrested on be. charges of trespassing and disturbing the peace. And I imagine they won't get an invite back to Coors Field for quite a while. Good. Oh, no. Yeah. no. No. No, no, Yeah, good. The uh, wonderfully miserable New York Yankees offici- uh, officially released Josh Donaldson. I saw that. The <laughs> end of the Donaldson era. Former twin, veteran third baseman. Uh, an odd dude. Yeah. Kind of an odd dude. I liked when Josh I mean, Donaldson was here with the Twins. I liked the edginess of the guy. I liked how right. he wasn't a no, you know, he at, wasn't at, a... Uh, at the beginning, it was good. Yeah. I, I would say it kind of wore out its welcome. you got to wonder how many more chances a guy like that's going to get. I don't think he'll get many more, no. Yeah. He's 37, he, too. What, wasn't, right. wasn't his stop here in Minnesota the first time he had received a long-term contract? That I don't know. I, I don't follow that I, kind of thing. I thought Maybe. I thought that was the first time that he had gotten like a a three year plus deal kind of thing in his career. Don't know. All I, I can mean, tell you this is at the start, I liked his attitude. I like yep. his I liked his never back down type of vibe he sent out. But right. you know, the guy was injured a lot, and that was his yep. problem in New York. He he, he was yep. never never on the field, and when he was, he wasn't terribly impressive. It's hard to believe that yep. he was the AL MVP only six seven years ago. I know, I agree. Apparently, he didn't get along with Aaron Boone, the skipper over there. Don't you love all this Yankee misery? It's kind of fun, <laughs> isn't it? Well, I do. Do you think Aaron Boone? We'll be back. I, I don't know if he'll be back. There, I mean, the that's Yankees the type have of, such impatience. And that's the type of market where they're going to have to do something just to keep the fan base from setting the stadium on fire. So right. they're, they're going to have to they're yeah. going to have to do I, something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I recently I, I, I saw something about odds on who will be the first manager fired or the next manager fired in Major League Baseball, right. and Boone was right. the favorite. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of surprised it hasn't happened already, but you know. I love it. Please continue with this miserable path, New York Yankees. Please. <laughs> this is all I've ever wanted. <laughs> we got a new women's pro hockey team up and running, or at least uh, close to it. We're getting a club here in Minnesota. That's awesome. I mean, why wouldn't we, right? We are the, go the ahead, who wants the state of, right? We are. Well, does it? Doesn't this replace the White Caps? I thought this was a that was team that replaced the White Caps. Who in the world yeah. are the White Caps? I think that's that was our other working. professional team. Oh, okay. I think that's the case there, uh, Brad Ryder, Randy yeah. Shaver. Yeah. They're putting together six franchises for a women's professional hockey league, a 24-game regular season. It'll begin this winter. Three teams in the U.S., three teams in Canada. That's cool. The American franchises are going to be located in Boston. Right here in the Twin Cities in New York City. The Canadian franchises are going to be in uh, Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa. And they'll come up with some team names, some logos, some general managers. I wonder if maybe there's a, 
a distant relative of Joe McGrath who might want to run the club. Uh, and they'll have some details coming here shortly on this and that. Maybe they'll get a television deal, but right now they're planning on streaming the games on, uh, how do you call it, the godless internet. And they're looking to do, you know, uh, shared events with the NHL, have a presence at the All-Star game and things like that. Kind of like what the WNBA does. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I think, that, I, I, I think that's kind of the concept that people are trying to have is can, can women's hockey – um, share the, you know, be shared along like what the WNBA does. I mean, well, the WNBA success is certainly on their own, for sure. I mean, you know, they've, they've really, it's re- that league has really blossomed in the last 10 years, for sure. But, I mean, at the, at the beginning, they needed, you know, that, that helpful, um, push from the NBA that that partnership in order for it to get to get going but once it did it took off and I think there's some that hope that the hockey can do the same thing not only from a recognizability standpoint but financially too I mean the yep, WNBA exactly. the WNBA you know it like you said it's taken off but in its early stages it would not have survived without being a part of the ESPN deal that the NBA That's had right. And yep. if they can tie in this league, this hockey league, to the NHL somehow and maybe get some sort of financial compensation through there, I don't know if this is down the road, then that, that's a way that this league can survive too. You know what the uh, women's hockey league should do is uh, embrace something that the men's league is so afraid of now. They should encourage fighting. Yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> they should say, look, the NHL wants to act like fighting isn't a part of hockey. We're going to show you that it is. Oh, I'd be all about that. Because the correct answer is, it is. We all want to pretend like it's not. Right. Speaking of hockey, has anyone seen that Oppenheimer movie? Oppenheimer? Not, not yet. yet. Not yet, but I want to. I mean, I, I don't even know if I'd recognize the guy anymore. I mean, I remember what he lo- uh, used to look like. Former NHL player and world-class dork, Sean Avery, <laughs> oh, gosh. is in the new Oppenheimer movie. You guys remember Sean Avery? He sure. is a mm-hmm. dork. He's been, he's been in uh, plenty of movies. Oh, oh he has been? Yeah. In... He was just mm-hmm. in something else recently, too. Well, maybe I did have that in front of me. What other yeah, movies? Yeah, you should have that. He looks good in the suit. Okay, no, I don't. What other movies has he... Yeah, let me sh- I mean, anything that we've heard of? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, really? Uh, Tenant, Patriot's Day, Mile 22, <laughs> Amsterdam. <laughs> oh, Tenant is good. <laughs> Sean Avery. The guy was just a clown. Remember his gimmick of screening the goaltender? That's kind of what made him famous. Nobody? No. I State didn't. of hockey, my ass. <laughs> and any, I, don't, I don't need to get into it. It'll take up too much time. But he's on, He was on a show that I'm watching right now, Special Ops Linus. Anybody watching that? No. Oh, I was Paramount going Plus? to. So have you, you've noticed him before, Josh. Is, is he any good at it? Oh, he's fine. Okay. You know? yeah. oh. <laughs> Just kind of I mean, you've seen some of those movies and don't really remember them. And it's not bad. So be- because of uh, Sean Avery making, and he does have some lines, it says here. You know, he has a decent role in the movie Oppenheimer. Yard Barker talked about some of the other famous NHL performances in film and television. Uh, NHLers who got into films or television. Uh, right off the get-go, and this is probably the first one that would come to mind uh, for anybody. A lot of this, I don't, I didn't see any of the, what these people are talking about in this article. But I'm sure the first thing that came to mind was Cam Neely. Yep. Mm, yep, Dumb and Dumber. In Dumb and Dumber, also me, myself, plus Irene, and he was in Dumber and Dumber 2. It was the dead man that hit me with the salt shaker. Kick his ass, Seabass! <laughs> Seabass said that? <laughs> well, if that is Seabass sitting over there. Let me tell you something. I was going to burn the XL Energy Center to the ground if one more idiot yelled, kick his ass, Seabass, at a game when a fight started. Back, remember when the pig, in, when the pigs first started in, what, 2000? Yeah. yeah. Every moron that saw a fight live had to yell, kick his ass, Seabass, and I came very close to doing some destructive things. I got so friggin' tired of that. Those are the same guys who yell uh, free bird when a cover band is trying to play. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's always one.
They all thought they were being so original in the stands at the early years of the Pigs games by yelling, kick his ass, see bass. It ruined Cam Neely's memory, <laughs> or my memory of Cam Neely's role in that movie. Uh, remember, you know, um, does anyone remember before Cam Neely got into the movies, do you remember the ESPN ad that he did? He was very good. I mean, this might have been like his audition for movies and television. Anyone know what I'm talking about? No. No. After Cam Neely retired from hockey, they did a, a commercial for ESPN. And I don't know what the basis was, but Cam Neely was he's retired. He's in his front yard. Oh, oh, I remember it now. Cam Neely's in his front yard doing some gardening because now he's retired from hockey and he has nothing else to do. And the ad was about 24-hour coverage of the NHL coming up soon on ESPN. This is many years ago. So that was the ad. Don't miss all of the hockey coverage on ESPN. And Cam Neely is sitting there gardening, and he turns so he turns back to the cameraman, and he says, Oh, I retire, and now you guys decide to cover the NHL. And then he had this great line. He had this great line. He says, you guys want to come in the house and kick my dog while you're at it? <laughs> it was very That's well true. done. Very well done. That's true. All right, does anyone remember Wayne Gretzky on Saturday Night Live in 1989 or when he made an appearance on The Young and the Restless in 1981? What? He's Joining me cut. is celebrity sportsman Wayne Gretzky. Hello, Wayne. Hello, Gene. Great day to fish, isn't it? The great one, Wayne Gretzky. It's my lucky stick. I cannot see him being a very convincing actor. No. He plays I don't him. think they wanted him to be. I think they wanted him just to be himself. Be, be the straight fun. guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it says here, yeah, he did a funny bit or two with Mike Myers when he hosted Saturday Night Live in 89. And, of course, you know, that was right when he got traded to L.A., you know, and, and all that. So he had sudden connections, you know, instant connections in the entertainment industry. But also in 81, he made some kind of a, what they call here a wooden performance <laughs> on the famous soap opera Young and the Restless. You probably can find that on YouTube or something. Marty McSorley was in Bad Boys, uh, Martin Lawrence and, uh, how do you call it, Will Smith. Uh, what? And, and Con Air in 97. Put the gun out of the lockbox, Mac. Go on back there and check it out. There he is in Con Air. Oh, wow. And that was it for him in Con Air, I would imagine. There he goes. Oh, 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 here it is. Uh, Sean Avery. Yeah, you're right. Am Amsterdam, Oppenheimer. Okay. Oh, it says here he was in a movie called The Rocket about the life of Maurice Richard. Hmm. I'd like to watch that film just for the, the story of Maurice Richard's life. The Philadelphia Flyers were in a movie called This Is 40. Uh, members of the Philadelphia uh, Flyers. Uh, Scott Hartnell with that big fat face of his. Ian <laughs> LaPerriere, Matt Carl, James Van Riemsdyke. What sport do you guys play? Uh, we play hockey. Who do you guys play for? We play for the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah. So you guys are all from Philadelphia? No. no. Actually, none of us are. That sounds kind of funny. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> they, they flirt with Megan Fox and Leslie Mann. But that was fun. All yeah, four players, all four players portrayed themselves. Brent Burns, a guy who used to play for the Pigs here. Brent Burns was in the Vikings series. Ah, I just waiting. See that? And he gets. <laughs> no, not Gunhild. It's me, Skane. Here is your death. Long live the king. Didn't he, uh, Waffle? Didn't you and Josh get really into that? Do you remember that guy? Oh yep. yeah, totally. Yeah, he I has, was pretty excited he was going to be on there. He has such a cool death too. He does. Yeah, <laughs> it says here he got beheaded. Yeah, he got his head chopped off, and then they have a close up where they zoom into his head, and it's just like looking into the camera with his eyes open. It was sweet. <laughs> if I was a famous person and they asked some movie producer asked me to do a cameo in a movie, I'd say yes under one condition: I get to die a horrifically awesome death in the movie. <laughs> yeah, like, that's one of my dreams too. And then uh, put my head on a spike. That'd be cool, too. <laughs> my favorite Brent Burns story from when he was playing here in town was a dude I used to drink with. He was at a busy bar one night in St. Paul after a Pigs game. And Brent Burns walked into the bar and butted in front of the 20 people in line for a beer and said, yeah, can I get a uh, captain or whatever? He butted, he just walked right past. So this dude that I was drinking with said, what the hell is this? Who does this guy think he is he can get in line? So he waited for later on in the night when he and Brent Burns were both at the bar together, and this guy said, Hey, man, 
aren't you Brent Burns from the wild? And Burns said, well, yeah, that actually is me. And he said, you totally suck. <laughs> <laughs> he cut me off at a potbelly in Woodbury once. Yeah, yeah, he awesome. just jumped right in front of everybody. He doesn't like he waiting is. in line. <laughs> Friggin. I don't know how much of this audio you want to continue to play, Josh. You you go ahead if you think it's well, worth it. Well, that was it. That's all That's all I got. Fair enough. Uh, real quick, other NHL player cameos. George LaRock was in the movie Goon. I still haven't seen Goon. Oh, I liked Goon. Yeah, I did too. Hockey yeah, fans try to tell me it, it's comparable to Slapshot. I don't know. I haven't uh, I love Sean William Scott, though. bothered with it. Vincent Le Cavalier, uh was in, uh, in that same uh, Rocket Richard movie. Oh, Mike Ricci was in there. Oh, my God. No close-ups on Mike Ricci, I hope. <laughs> oh, oh, of course, uh, Mike Madonna and Basil McRae in that awful Mighty Ducks garbage from mm-hmm. 1992. <laughs> and Wayne Gretzky was in the second one. You know, going back to Wayne Gretzky, uh, yeah. if uh, if you listen to podcasts at all, there's a podcast called Smartless. Uh, it's a pretty big, big pop, uh, popular podcast. Wayne Gretzky's episode was awesome. He was yeah, so good on very that. Good. I listened oh. to it twice. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's good. So if you're a Gretzky fan, it's worth checking out. Oh, man, one of the worst movies ever made, even worse than Mighty Ducks, Young Blood. <laughs> I never saw that. My parents wouldn't let me watch it because they heard about the pubes scene. There's pubes, there's yeah. boobs, there's a lot of foul language. <laughs> Uh, Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder, Young Blood, starring Rob Lowe. Sure, You're, haven't seen it. No, never saw it, as you would say. It's, it's terrible. I mean, it, when I was an eighth grader, of course, we thought it was really cool. Oh, it can't I, be that bad if it had uh, pubes and boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you save that waffle? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what, Randy Shaver? That's the that's the most solid point you've made on this program in a long time. <laughs> You know, we were, we Josh, were... Josh must have lived a sheltered life if he wasn't allowed to. Oh, my gosh. I, I was, I've told Nick this before. I, I couldn't watch the A-team. His That's parents, right. <laughs> no. His folks didn't allow him to do anything. <laughs> no, yeah, I was pretty sheltered. They were so worried about what programming he watched. It was lawless at my house. Uh, we loved it. Could you watch Three's Company? Yes, we could okay. watch Three's Company. Oh, there was right. so much sexual innuendo oh, in that God. program. Yes. The whole program was one giant sexual misunderstanding. <laughs> I love that show. And I'm surprised your folks let you watch that. I, some of the stuff I think they just didn't get. Okay. But it, usually it would be somebody would say something to them like, oh, don't let them watch this for this reason. But, you know, Young Blood with Rob Lowe comes out in 86. I think I was an eighth grader. We were all fired up. You know, we were, we were big time, you know, into hockey back in those days. And it was so bad. I mean, it's one of the examples I talk about now and again on this program war. I mean... Have a hockey player on site when you're making a hockey movie <laughs> to tell the actor no hockey player has ever held their hockey stick like that. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Lowe's even mentioned that, that it was silly. He'd never been on skate. He had no idea what he was doing. They're standing around listening to the coach give directions, uh, you know, draw up a play, and they're all holding a hockey stick like you'd hold a broom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, have someone there for the little... And, and Rob Lowe, was, he was so bad. It was so obvious. That he, but I never noticed this. Peter Zezel and Steve Thomas made an appearance in that movie. I never noticed that. Brendan huh. Shanahan and me, myself, and Irene, Bill Ranford was the goalie portraying Jim Craig in Miracle. Hmm. Obviously, they had a professional goalie um, you know, for the hockey scenes. I never knew it was Bill Ranford. Uh, and Luke Robitaille was in the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie Sudden Death. <laughs> oh, that's one of an all-time classic. <laughs> so I like bad. that movie. Yeah, it's bad. But... It's, it's bad, but that's what makes it so fun. It's just how over the top it is. Well, they had to have a real goalie in the Miracle movie because that goalie made about 48 saves <laughs> the last 10 minutes of the game. <laughs> Dude, Brad Ryder. Oh, I went to see that movie twice in a day. I was so excited for the story of the 1980 Olympic hockey team. I went and saw it as soon as we got off the air, one whenever this was, 15-some-odd years ago. And then later on that night, I went with a pack of friends. Nice. And when it was over, I asked my buddy, who's getting getting a lot of airtime lately on this program, hasn't he, Josh? I asked a half-man, half-emerging. I said, what would you think of the movie? And Merzo said, it was pretty good, except... I don't really remember Jim Craig making 78 saves <laughs> in the third period. Well, they made it look like Jim Craig, there was a, 11 different guys firing pucks at him at the same time. <laughs>
All right. Here's a fun video for you. I hate to call a guy out for this because it's such a helpless moment in a grown person's life. (laughs) But it really does look like some college football podcast dork. It really does look like he gambled, lost, and crapped his pants in the middle of a podcast show. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's you know, up on 93x.com. That is the, that's what, that's got to be the funniest expression I think I've ever seen. Oh, was, yep. So I, I laughed my butt off this morning. It was so funny. Me too. <laughs> Those faces like he made. Oh, gosh. I got to look at this now. Go to our website. <laughs> and Ashley it's the says, movements he makes that you know that's what it is yes. because yep. you're trying not to sit in it. Yeah, he was trying not to sit <laughs> all the way back down. He was so shocked. It appeared like he had no warning whatsoever. Yeah, how can you be so shocked? Like, you... You know when that's about to happen. No, you don't. I, Not always. Ashley, take it from a guy who leads the league, at least <laughs> at least led the league between my 18th and 38th birthday in emergency situations. No, you do not know when it's coming. That's awful. Not for all of us, at least. I think he was trying a one-cheek sneak, and it and it backfired. On him. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a situation. If, if you ha- if you don't have the opportunity to see the video, it's it's two dorks in a split st- screen situation and they're talking about Notre Dame football as if there's anybody who would listen to that. <laughs> and one of them, you can obviously see the moment the fart went sideways on him. <laughs> and like Randy says, he arches his back so he doesn't have to sit in it and he just exits the picture. He looks so panicked. He does look panicked. His partner there had a confused look on his face. Oh, that was yeah. pretty funny too. Oh yeah. They call oh, yeah. this uh, they call this podcast where they talk Notre Dame football. They call it the Irish Breakdown. A lot of people on pod on what do you call it Twitter said we got to see the re- see the real Irish Breakdown <laughs> when this guy lost it. <laughs> he later on came back and said he had a quad uh, double quad cramps. That's why he got up and went. Uh huh. And sure. nobody's nobody's buying that. No, you don't get up and out of screen for that. <laughs> Stretch it out a little. That was a gamble. I don't think in my in my lifetime I've had a quad cramp. Let alone two. Let alone have a At double. The same yeah, time. true. <laughs> yeah. That was a double quad cramp from back in the day. That cyclist that was interviewed. Dude, <laughs> that is some of my. And it's been long enough since you've played that where maybe there's someone out there who's not familiar with it. That's one of the, my favorite pieces of audio you've ever collected in the in the history of this program, Josh. That was a grown man who was involved in a bicycle race. In case you don't know, for those who already know, sorry if, you, if you're tired of... Grown man in a bicycle race. He takes a break on the side of the road. He does a pit stop. <laughs> and right there... <laughs> Right there on the spot, there just happens to be a television reporter and a cameraman, and they're at, they're going to ask him about the bicycle race. And before he gets a word out, he has a massive cramp. Ah! Ah! And he goes down, and it sends him. Uh. It sends him falling backwards, luckily into a lawn chair that is sitting there. I mean, oh, that snuck up on him too. All right, one more time. Ah! <laughs> that was painful. Ah! Oh, my word. I knew it. I knew you were going to come at me with the karate kick where the guy's head came up. <laughs> That's beautiful. God, I love the tricks you can pull with those. With that audio machine. What are we doing? What do I got time for? Oh, this is fun. <sighs> this is fun. Jacksonville Jaguars coach Doug Peterson cut his own son from the roster yesterday on what they call roster deadline day. (laughs) You know, if head coaches could have been more realistic about their own sons, youth football would have been a lot more fun for some of us. (laughs) (laughs) Remember those days? Oh, weird. The coach's son is the starting quarterback. That's so shocking. That's always like that. (laughs) Still happens. (laughs) I'm just laughing because you have a son playing football. So. You know, I mentioned this before. It's <laughs> funny, at least here. I'm sure it's different like in Kansas City or somewhere. But here, all the kids want to play wide receiver now because right. of Justin Jefferson. Oh, sure. Nobody's yeah. interested in yeah. quarterback. Oh, well, cool. There's no fights over quarterback like there used to be. Yeah, that's a good question if it's if it's radically different in, in, in other cities. I mean, obviously, the biggest star football player here in town happens to be a wide receiver. 
But I bet that more kids want to be wide receivers nowadays because, number one, they've opened up the playbooks for little kids like it's a freaking professional team. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've had this bitch many times on the year. There when, are very little runs anymore. Yeah, when we were kids, it was the most boring <laughs> friggin' process <laughs> in all the world to practice or play youth football. Because all we did was run the ball up the middle. We had to focus on the fundamentals and all that garbage. We never threw the ball. Now, it's so wide open. It you is. You lucky little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they do a lot of jet sweeps. Just, you know, that there's plenty of those. I think that's the play you see the most. I mean, I, w I wish I would have pulled my head out of my ass and realized just how boring a sport I was involved in when I played football as a kid. I hated it. And I used to walk up to the coach, even as a little kid, and say, throw the friggin' football for Christ's sake. <laughs> I mean, coaches hated me. Coaches hated me because we had we had a kid on our team who now is a coach in the NFL. He had cool. thighs like a 35-year-old man. He could outrun anybody. But yet when we're down six, we're still handing it off to the fullback and see if we can get that for I'd walk up and say the kid's name was Corey. Now he coaches and I'd say, Will somebody throw the ball to Corey so we can win the game? <laughs> Why are we acting like Corey isn't the greatest athlete in this entire neighborhood? <laughs> give it to Corey. But because he wasn't, you know, the head coach's son, no uh... we'll give we'll hand it to Gary again. Yay! Go Gary! <laughs> Was the quarterback decent enough where no! he could have... Oh. They were garbage! They were all garbage! Have you guys ever seen those teams where the coach actually does know that their kid sucks and so, like, they, they put their kid in, like, you know, the crappy positions? Because no. that's almost awkward, too. That never happened to We're, us. Oh, God. That, that always, like, it made me feel uncomfortable. I'm we like, oh, one, the car had, ride home must be awkward. We had one good quarterback, Kurt. Eighth grade. He, does, he, he he lives far out of town, but just in case he's podcasting, Kurt, you were good. <laughs> <laughs> you just made that guy's day. <laughs> and he turned out to be a wonderful guy. I used to go the exact opposite direction when I coached my son in baseball all those years. I, I would bat him last on purpose, and he was not a last place hitter, but I'd have my other assistant coach say, he can't hit there. And I'm like, nope, he's hitting there as long as I'm the head coach because I don't want any of you morons telling me that <laughs> I'm, I'm batting him too high in the order. So You're right, Yeah, nowadays you get death threats, so it's probably smart on your part. My dad was the freshman baseball coach at my high school, and when I was a freshman. I hadn't played baseball in a number of years, but I needed a spring sport to play. I didn't really want to do track, so I was like, Dad, I might try for the team. He's like... Ah, you really shouldn't. <laughs> what were you trying, trying out for what team? The freshman baseball team. And my dad was the and coach. He was, the he, coach. he was like, he goes, here's the deal. He goes, you're you're a good enough athlete that, like, yeah, objectively you should probably be on the team, but you'd be taking a spot from a kid who's been playing baseball for years, and you don't. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I'll just go do track. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what. So uh, this uh, Doug Peterson, the coach of the Jaguars, had to cut his son. My son. Ashley, that's a great question, though, I, what you brought up. Did I ever did I ever play on a team where the coach had a kid on the team, yet the team was yet the kid was garbage? Right? That's yep. what you were asking. I guess I can think of one. And the coach was realistic about it. So there was one time. There was, there was a hockey team where the coach was realistic about his son's abilities. In football, it didn't seem to ever matter. Did the kid <laughs> know he wasn't the greatest and understand? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. In football, it didn't play out that way. It didn't matter what kind of athlete that kid was. He was going to be the starting quarterback. Ugh. Let's hand it off again. What are we doing on second down? Are we going to hand it off? Oh, what a thrill. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again. God, what a waste of time. That's why I always say, I should have gotten into bowling. Mm -hmm. I should have gotten into pocket yeah. billiards. I should have. But I didn't. I didn't use my head. And, of course, my folks didn't give a rat's ass. I remember my dad saying to me at a bar, we were drinking at a bar when I was like 30, he said, you know, because I played a couple, three years of baseball, okay? And now I'm 30 years old drinking with my dad at the bar, we're watching the Twins game, and he says, you know, you should have stuck with baseball. You had, a pretty, you had a pretty good arm. You should have stuck with baseball. And I said, why the hell didn't you say that to me when I was 11? Yeah, that would have been good to know, dude. Instead of just lighting another cigarette, grabbing another Budweiser. What was your brother best at? Drinking <laughs> and then fighting. Football was my Football. brother's. Yeah, that was his. I was going to guess. He was good sport. at hockey though too, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah, he was. He was good athlete. Um, football was his best sport. 
What are we doing now? Oh, here you go, NFL fans. This ought to be one of your new favorite players. The New Orleans Saints have a new punter, okay? He's a 30-year-old undrafted rookie by the name of Lou Headley. He's from Australia. Before he got involved in punting, he owned a tattoo shop. Pretty interesting, right? Yeah. He's got a lot of them, too. And it ain't over yet. He's funny, too. He must be, because not only does he have an ironic mustache, but he also has a hilariously ironic mullet haircut. Mm. He's hilarious. He's the best. I like his look, too. Stop it with this. I like his look quite a bit. Come on. You're only encouraging more dudes to grow a funny mustache and wear a mullet. It's the tattoos for me. He's got a neck tat. Oh, yeah, he does. (laughs) You're a neck tat. (laughs) Yeah. That's his neck tat. That's all you are. (laughs) About time somebody said it. (laughs) I've been wild today. I don't know what got into me. Oh, the Vikings are going to go to the Super Bowl. They just signed Miles Gaskin as a backup running back. <laughs> All right. I can put him over the top. <laughs> I couldn't even understand what you said. Miles who? Miles Gaskin, who was released by the Miami Dolphins on Wednesday, has been signed by the Vikings and put on their active roster. I feel bad for the t- uh, employees at the team store. The line's going to be out the, around the block for those jerseys. Yeah. Yep. Maybe yep. you got, you know, you guys maybe ought to, you know, do your research. Maybe I'm the biggest Miles Laskin fan in, in town. <laughs> Maybe he becomes the next Scotty Graham. Yes, that could. Well, if that happens, good for the Vikings. Maybe he becomes the next Rick Fenny. They didn't find him working in a pharmacy, though. That's the Scotty Graham story. No, they did not. They did not. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll wrap her up here shortly. Uh, with this information for you. I couldn't possibly care less about such things, but in case this moves you one way or another, a fella called Timbaland and Justin Timberlake will be putting together music for this year's Monday night football games, at least some of this year's Monday night football schedule. Does it does is that like the theme music, you mean? Yes. Like the mm-hmm. lead-in? Okay. Is yeah, that something right. anyone pays attention to anymore, the Monday Night Football theme? Sometimes. Oh, I think uh, Carrie, Carrie Underwood, Underwood yeah. is Sunday Night Football. She does a good job. Thing. Carrie yeah. Underwood does the Monday Night Football? Oh, Sunday, Sunday night. Oh, Sunday night. Sunday. I was going to say, they did not bump her. Can you sing me the song? How does it go? Oh. All it's my rowdy friends. friends are here in Sunday night. You've yeah. been waiting all day for yeah. a Sunday night. Wait a minute. Night. So they're still singing the same song that Hank Williams Jr.? Mm-hmm. They are? Right. No, yeah. the Sunday yeah. night song's different. With a different twist. Okay. I, it the, does, don't, don't hurt yourself. I don't care one way or the other. But but you're telling me on one of these, because there's it's Sunday, Monday, Thursday. On one of them, they're still singing a, a, like a, a fresh version of Hank Williams Jr.'s tune? Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, and then last year on Monday Night Football, they had Marshmallow do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that now. Who? Marshmallow, the DJ. That's Wapple's guy, DJ Marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got the cool head thing. Yeah. Looks like Marshmallow. Light up head. All the kids doing drugs to it. Marshmallow the, around. the DJ. Yeah. You know, I bet you'd put him at starting quarterback. I, I totally would. No matter what his abilities were. I totally would. Perhaps. That would be amazing. He wouldn't even need a helmet. He already has one. What does he wear a helmet for? He wears a marshmallow helmet. Oh, and oh I, so, I don't know these it's things. It's so yeah. large, too. Yeah, it's huge. He wears it's a big. large, so no one knows what he looks like? Um, I think it's been, like, leaked maybe once. It's yeah, like it's yeah. like Guar? It's, I remember being disappointed. Yeah, it's, it's Chris Comstock. He used to be dot .com back in the day. Oh, my I rowdy friends are here yeah. on Monday night. I got all your EDM music updates that you need. Right Thanks, here. Thanks, Wapo. Right here. There you go. All right, fair enough. Monday night football coming up, Sunday, Thursday. Couple on Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, college weekend. football Gotta... kicks off tomorrow with, yeah. uh, I mean, it kicked Gophers. off last weekend, but it really kicks off this weekend. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. we're tomorrow night. Thick of it. The Gophers play Nebraska tomorrow. That'll mm-hmm. be fun. Yeah. I was reading about this. See, this is how you uh, throw your collegiate uh, athletic career in the toilet real quick. I was just reading about a player on the Nebraska roster who got arrested for uh, uh, robbing a vape shop. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. 
Yep. That video's pretty good. And it's up on 93x.com. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know there was a video. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. video. And then uh, the best part is when he realizes there's eight cops waiting for him as he walks out with all his uh, vapes and whatnot. Like he bashed in a window, didn't he? And yeah, he used, like, some concrete nearby, bashed out, or, you know, a rock or whatever it was. <laughs> a window crawls in, uh, kicks open a door, and it takes, I mean, an incredible amount of vape product. Yeah, I read it was, like, hundreds of... It was. Uh, a, I mean, they showed a picture of, of how much he took. It was a lot. Yeah, thousands I, of dollars. I don't get it. Isn't he on, like, a good track here? <laughs> on a good track? Yeah, I mean, he's Nebraska's tight end. Isn't that, like, do you really need to be, like, robbing vape stores? you got a good life going oh, for I yourself. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. I don't, well, he's one of these guys that's already played for multiple colleges. Oh. And sometimes, oh. sometimes that means you're a moron. Yeah, he needs to steal the vapes. Yeah. I, well, I didn't it. realize there was a video, and so by the time he grabs all of his vape uh, sticks... The cops are already there waiting yeah. on him. Mm-hmm. And he kind of has a, oh, no, look on his face. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> all right, Randy. How can you have an, oh, no, when you've done all that? I mean, that you guys be the stupidest criminal ever. Yeah, it, it seemed pretty dumb. Uh, I don't think he planned that out very well. He's one of those yeah. guys. He's one of those guys. Randy and Brad, uh, take her easy. Randy, have a nice final day at the fair. I will. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Brad, we'll talk to you on Friday. Okay. Thanks very, very much. Coming up next, we're going to learn all there is to know about the big Howie's Mud Bog Party starting tomorrow in gorgeous, what I understand, gorgeous Finlayson, Minnesota. The folks from Howie's are in studio next on the Half-Ass Morning Show. There's a douchiness to them. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. Hey, Minnesota. CJ Ham here. Huddle up for a second. You need someone to go to extra yard when your furnace or AC is out? Give the ball to the certified pros at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. They've been at it for 90 years. Ready? Break. It's savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning State Fair Specials. Deals on deals on deals. Savings from $30 on a tune-up all the way up to $950 on a new cooling system. Visit standardheating.com slash offers for details on all their state fair deals. Standard Heating, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930. Half-assed morning show. 93X. Are you currently enjoying the show on the Stitcher app? Then... You need to know Stitcher is going away on August 29th. Yep, going away, as in kaput, gone, dead. Rest in peace, Stitcher, and thanks for 15 years of service to the podcast community. So switch to another podcast app and follow this show there. Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Half-Assed Morning Show. 93X. Well, we've got guests here on the half ass Morning Show as we've hit 8.33. Starting tomorrow, a big filthy party fires up in Finlayson, Minnesota. Howie's Mud Bog, by God. And we got a couple folks here to tell us all about the this and the that. But even before, before we introduce our guests and they tell us all about the, this event, when they first walked in the studio, Josh said, is that Dirk Nowitzki? <laughs> <laughs> is the German Moses Dirk Nowitzki? Because our guests have a videographer here to record it, and this man is seven foot seven. <laughs> Let me take a look at this effing guy. Holy balls. Do you, do you want to play YMCA basketball with me? Josh and I are putting together. With, we've got uh, in studio... Uh, we've got Kylie and Tony from Howie's Mud Bog. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning. Good morning. What's going on? Hi, thanks for coming in. It's been a while. I know. I don't even know how many years ago we had a we had a chit chat with Howie's Mud Bog. It's been too damn long. Yeah, last time you guys, I think it was the last time you crushed a car in the back lot, mm-hmm. which was a lot of yeah. fun. Were any of you involved in that on that day? How many years ago? Um, I was there, but I wasn't part of the interview. I was a bit younger, but okay. um, it, I mean, this had to have been ten years ago or something. Was it that long Sorry, ago? Sorry, really? we've been, we've been such five. Five? Yeah. yeah, because I was in there. What I do you was, mean you were in where? I was. We in put the, him in the car that was being yeah. crushed. You hoping, got, <laughs> what are you talking about? I was what? in the mud bog when it was getting crushed. You car. were in the vehicle. Yeah, no I was way. doing an interview. Oh, you, with you, you were guys. doing the crushing. Yeah. I, you were. I, you were leading me to believe that you survived a crushing <laughs> of a. <laughs> well, we were wanting you to get crushed to see if you would survive. <laughs> Only five. I don't know. The liquor and the beer and the and the and the years of. Hard work on the radio. Everything's a friggin' blur. But thanks very much for coming in, uh, Kylie and Tony. Kylie, a driver. 
Yeah. Both, I, of, both of you are drivers? I'm Howie's daughter, but also I have my a truck of my own as well. Okay, your dad fired this whole thing up. Yeah. How many years ago? 30 years ago. Jesus, boy. This wow. year is our cool. 30th anniversary. That's so. great. Longer, far longer than you've been alive. Yeah, far longer. <laughs> and I'd imagine the difference between the amount of people you get then and now is pretty pretty incredible. Like, yeah. How many people do you guys usually get? I was up there a few years ago, and it's packed, not the bus. Yeah, we have 280 acres, and it is just packed. Every yeah. corner of it has people, campers, mud trucks, everything. We get, give or take, 4,000 people. Damn. It started out with just my dad's buddies, like, you know, 10 of them, and now it's this, so it's insane. You old man still around? Yeah. How's, yeah. He, how's he doing? Good. He's working on the bog today. He's uh, getting everything ready. Yeah, he's busy getting it ready. There's people coming in already, so he's out there getting it ready. You what, are you, what are your favorite events? You guys do a lot of them. There's, we were looking at a schedule of everything, and there's a ton of cool stuff going on. That dash for cash, that sounds great. Oh, I'm interested in the tug of war. That sounds sweet. Well, let's start with the dash for, I mean, aside from just watching these massive vehicles raise hell all weekend, yeah, there's all kinds of other things. Uh, tell us about the dash for cash first. Uh, uh, Tony, we haven't talked to you yet. We, we didn't get a chance to, uh, you're, you're a driver. What, what do you do, Tony? I'm a driver. I got a mud truck called Fearless. Uh, Fearless. Big blown alcohol, big horsepower truck. Dude, sweet. How, how many kind of horsepower? Of, yeah. uh, it should be pushing 16 to 1800. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and you're you're able to hang on to that <laughs> some bitch. But yeah, I mean it drinks. Uh, it's a uh, it runs on methyl alcohol, so it uh, it'll drink it drink more than any of us that all here put together. Well, yeah, but in about two and a half minutes. So. <laughs> a lot of Nick's family runs on that alcohol as well. <laughs> Ooh, we, there's no doubt about that. Dash for cash. We'll get to, uh, as much as we can here. Uh, for Howie's Mud Bob, but tell us about the dash because Josh said that's the gimmick he, uh, he, he likes. Um, dash for Cash is just this big, messy event, I guess. You have a people, we do women and men, two different events. Gotcha. And we have people line up at the very opposite end of our mud truck. And we start a timer and we say go, and they go running across the pit. And we have these plastic <laughs> water bottles filled with money, like 20s, 50s, 100s. Jesus gets up there and we have them buried we have somebody bury them in the mud pit oh, that's hilarious <laughs> and then they have to run across the mud pit and dig for these bottles They're and you'll see these people just like full on submerge yeah, themselves submerge oh, starred out like that's, yeah that sounds like fun <laughs> and what was the other one ashley uh, the tug of war the truck tug of war tug of war between vehicles yeah that yeah. sounds awesome how's that work um we have stock trucks that we do so you can just take your truck that you drive down the road and then we do those against each other and then we also have mud trucks so we have these huge mega trucks 10 feet in the air we hook them up with a strap back to back we have this huge concrete pad we actually just poured a brand new tug of war pad it's humongous probably double the size of our last one and we hook them up and they pull each other back and forth until one crosses the line and okay. they win Okay. Yeah, so, last year I was uh, piled in a fire truck. A buddy of mine decided to start buying fire trucks on online auction. <laughs> <laughs> and he drove it up there, and we're like, can we pull it? So we ended up getting a pull against a 6x6. Six six. You were pulling against a fire truck? Uh, well, one fire truck pulling against a military truck. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. Uh, we I'd tried be, to weigh it down with people, but they wouldn't let us have any in the back, so we had to cram them full in the cab. I'd be, I'd <laughs> that be sounds a, awesome. I'd be afraid and he, to And he bought against. another fire truck for... That he'll be bringing for this year. I wish I could buy a fire truck. Yeah, I Me too. I, I should have fire truck buddies. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'd do with it, but I'd like to buy a fire truck. Uh, Kylie drives a vehicle called Karma. As Tony just said, his vehicle is fearless. You don't look terribly fearless to me. You look kind of soft, Wapple said. <laughs> <laughs> Until I put a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> He's got something we don't have. He's got dirt underneath his fingernails. Well, <laughs> um, I don't know. You should check out my fingernails, but it's probably just because I'm gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just don't shower. <laughs> Kylie, what's behind the name Karma for your vehicle? Um, I just like the sound of it. I actually just got that name this year, so it's still kind of growing on me, but I just like, you know, the good comes with the bad, and I go in the mud, and I just like the name, how it goes with it. How long have you actually been driving for? When did you start out? Um, I got my own truck when I was 16. I kind of drove, like, my dad's and my brother's trucks before that when I was younger, but I got my own truck when I was 16, 
and it was pretty much just a stock truck on 37 bogger tires and I slowly built it up and now it's a lifted 12 inch lifted truck on 44s uh, now and I so cool. have a built tranny and transmission and a tea case and everything and yeah, I built it up, and now I just have fun in the mud with it. So, Tony and Kylie, what do you drive in your personal lives? I mean, it's got to be something awesome. Wouldn't right? would we be? Maybe we'll be surprised. It's just a, a reasonable um, <laughs> sedan. <laughs> of I, some I, drive, so, I drive somebody else's vehicle. I work uh, for building restoration, so um, I got a company truck. So I drive that around. Okay, oh, okay. That's how I like, fly under the radar. Sure. <laughs> if, you got, if you got somebody's truck with badging on it that looks like official. People don't worry about you much. You get <laughs> speed a little bit. You look like a professional. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you put a lift on it? Does it got a lift on it? Not really. Not really? really? Yeah, it's a good way to be under the radar. I hear That's where you're smart. going with that, Tony. What about Nobody you? Nobody questions uh, trucks like that. No. I mean, if you put a drive around in a van and there's nothing on it, you're, you've got a creeper van. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It says plumber on the side, and all of a sudden you blend right in. <laughs> <laughs> That's so smart. It's a very good point. So what kind of shady activities are you involved in? <laughs> We work on buildings, high-rise high stuff. Okay. So no plumber vans, but pickup trucks. <laughs> Kylie, what about your own personal vehicle? You still like something big and bad? I mean, I just drive a Jeep Cherokee, so there nothing too big and bad, but it's always dirty. I mean, I drive it at the mud bog because I live there, so, I mean, it's always dusty and muddy. and Sure. Yeah. About yeah. So it all starts tomorrow. Is that uh, for fans, folks who want to show up uh when can they get in? When can they start setting up their campers and whatnot for the shows? Our gates open at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. People are already rolling in today, but our gates don't officially open until tomorrow. Okay. So you can come out any time of the weekend, get a weekend pass or a day pass, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's not just trucks, ATVs, what other vehicles are mud bogging at Howie's Mud Bog. Um, pretty much anything. I mean, we even have a lawnmower race now. Oh, so. nice. Oh, cool. oh, Josh is there. We are fans. <laughs> yeah, big we, fan. We have become fans of lawnmower racing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see more of it. Yeah, that's, ex <laughs> that's exciting stuff. It really is. Yeah. Uh, what else was I going to... Well, I mean, let's say Cubby and I... Um, let's say we wanted to build our own killer mud bogging machine what, what kind of monies and what kind of know-how i'll sell you some parts i make parts for these things you do? <laughs> I do sell us some parts. Yeah. I, I don't know if i trust you <laughs> the way you've been coming off with i go under the radar and i uh, put a label on your no no of course but i mean it, it must be a pretty big undertaking like say to take your your, I mean, it, your regular vehicle and turn it into a killer mud bogging uh, well, I mean, terminator on a truck like mine there's really nothing left of the regular vehicle right you pretty much throw it all the way other than a couple body panels but um i mean you're talking hundred thousand plus to build something like God that i mean there's, there's there's some of these trucks that are well well over 100 150 thousand plus That's, seriously that yeah, is I mean, something we're talking 50 60 grand just in the motor and, and and why why mud? Why not Jello or KY or baked beans or something? Have you ever considered? Maybe you can't find enough of it. Okay, I mean, where are you going to find it? Yeah, I bet that's more expensive. Yeah. I mean, we live in northern Minnesota, so if it rains, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be driving the fearful truck. You guys want us to drive around, buy all the dollar stores, own? Then what's everybody going to do? Are you guys from the the general area of Finlayson? Yeah, we're. Yeah. Born and raised? Yeah, I live there. I used to, live there. years ago, I worked with a guy from Finlayson. He was one creepy son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, not all of us are creepy. No, no, I mean, you, no that, I'm just, uh, just that guy. So you can, you can keep an eye out for him oh, if, thank uh, you. if you run into him. Thank you. So starting tomorrow, and like we mentioned, there's all kinds of uh, events going on. A cornhole tournament, yeah. lawnmower races, freestyle, I imagine, is that like... When I watch freestyle monster trucks, you just can go buck wild, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's actually my favorite event. You can, we do one truck at a time, and it's not timed at all. They can go as long as, until their truck gets hot, pretty much. And you can do whatever you want in the pit. You have it to yourself. There's nobody else that you can run into. You can jump wherever. You can even just mud the whole time. Do whatever you want for an unlimited amount of time okay that's, that's so your cool. preferred event yeah so i've, I've never uh, been to anything like this but uh, the way that like the fans are situated for the to watch all of this happen is it possible to like spray them with mud 
Like, yeah, like oh, yeah. the fans that are closest to the fence definitely get some mud on them, like okay. especially when the trucks get close to the fence. But like they're a little bit far back. I mean, we have bleachers, and then people just pull up their trucks and sit in the tailgates too. Oh, cool! But they'll definitely get sprayed with mud. That's sweet. That's yeah. awesome. Like you ever seen a guy just rooster tailed a bunch of folks on the dock with his outboard? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it kind of looks like that. <laughs> that can be a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, what about, Tony, what about an ATV? If we wanted to have a decent ATV out there, what are we looking at? How much money would you have to put in that? Um, More affordable? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you just got to go on uh, Facebook Marketplace, find yourself uh, probably an old three-wheeler, and... Uh, you're set. Okay, we could. I that's, mean, that's maybe two, that's more two, in our budget. Two, three hundred bucks for that. And, it, and even if it don't run, we can just pull it around. We'll just tie a rope to something. Oh. <laughs> we'll make it look like it runs. Definitely seen that before. Yeah, it seemed like a much better driver. Because so you could buy a bunch of these things. You only need one that probably runs. We'll tie the rest together. Okay. That's awesome. Just end up beating the hell out of them. Yep. <laughs> that may be more is our speed. What do you say? Yeah, two, I think that's the way to do two, it. Two, three hundred bucks. Because I'm pretty cheap. Me too. Yeah. I'll be honest. I don't have a hundred thousand dollars to spend on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, neither one of us do. Well, it's it's been a pleasure to have you guys back in, it Kylie really has. and Tony. Uh, is there a website folks can go to so they can get any information that we haven't covered? Yeah, howiesmudbog.com, and you can also check out our Facebook as well. That's pretty much daily updated right now, so you can get all of our information there. Say hi to the old man for us. Yeah, of course. I bet he can go through a lot of beer. Uh, yeah. yeah, I bet that, uh, yeah. Just uh, your name's Howie. You know, you probably can for sure. And you know, and you must sell. You guys must sell merch over there because I'll tell you this much. Even though it's been a stretch of time since we've talked to the folks from Howie's Mudbog, when I go to concerts, when I go to ball games, I see uh, Wapple. You too? Oh, all the time. I always see some time. some guy running around town with a Howie's Mudbog mm -hmm. T-shirt. Yeah, I just saw three yesterday, and really? you can see all like three of us here alone are wearing our Howie shirts. We have different designs every year. So. You didn't bring in a box of those for free for the oh, half ass morning show? sorry. I'll have that to is mail a them. disappointment. <laughs> it's got to be Tony's fault on that one. No, I don't. I, I've only got like one. Yeah, I, always wait till the last one. I always wait till the last minute to go try to buy one. You know, know what's funny price. is people often ask us, hey, you got an extra 93X shirt? They don't give us anything around here either. No. <laughs> That's true. We have to buy them. True yeah. story. Thanks uh, to Kylie and Howie and Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, Dirk. From <laughs> Howie's Mudbug. Congratulations on the 2011 championship. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a chance to tell you yet. That was awesome. I hope a lot of our listeners go out there and have a blast. Thanks again, you guys. Yeah, thank you thank for you. having us. There's a douchiness to them. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Oh, man. Well, thanks again to the folks from Howie's Mud Bog, which fires up tomorrow up there in Finlayson. Very thanks cool. to, yes, Kylie and Tony and Dirk Nowitzki. I might need to ice my hand after shaking hands with Tony. He's got a hell of a grip. Well, he's a big dude. Yeah, he is. He thinks he's a tough guy. <laughs> That's the life right there. Yeah, that really sounds awesome. Building big trucks, mud bogging, beer drinking. It's so Small cool that she grew up that way. Yeah. Like surrounded by that kind of stuff. I thought that was always a good time. Small town fun. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's where it's at. If I could do it all over again, I would. I'd move out to the woods all by myself, covered in dirt and hair. <laughs> And I'd just be mumbling to myself something about the government. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the life. I told you that I, when I first saw Sling Blade, I envied the life of the main character. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to compare, you know, uh, mumbling lunatic characters from Sling Blade to our guests that were just in studio. It just brings me to the idea of simple, small-town life. I mean, when this, when this nightmare is finally over, Josh, when the world uh, rids itself of this radio program and we're free to hopefully free to go off and just do whatever we want to do C can you picture yourself just kind of in the middle of nowheres that's a dream of mine i'd love to do it now how isolated do you want to be well i need are to you be dirty are you covered in body hair i am <laughs> i have to be within at least an hour and a half of a chipotle <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing that's a lot bigger than your range used to be on Chipotle. Because didn't you say it had to be within like 10 minutes or something? It's not, yeah. It's not the same level of obsession I used to right. have. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, you're going to drive, you drive 90 minutes to hit that Chipotle? Yeah. You know what? I want to be further out. I, my, my wife won't go for it. Um, both of us grew up in the city. And, um, you know, I think there's some people that for them, I'm going to stay in the city my entire life, right? That's their thing. For me, I, I was, when I left, 
uh, I was 24, and I thought, oh, this is so much better. Yeah. I, and I'd love to move further and further out. Yeah, I think that's where I want to end up, too. A little broken down cabin. Nothing works in the cabin because I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> You're going to become like the forest man. Yeah. You're going to be like talking about, like, did you see him today? I saw him the other yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd walk in. Naked. You're right. I'd walk into town once in a while just to freak everybody out. Yeah. A big beer that has like a bird living in it or something. Yeah. <laughs> but the town that I stroll into once in a while to, you know, I don't know, maybe get a, 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 a 12 pack of beer or something. It's it's really small. I'm not talking about, you know, wandering my way into Grand Rapids. It's a small town that yeah. I live in. But, yeah, I become that guy that the kids are afraid of. Yeah, that's kind of my, it's where I want to go with this. My wife and I will probably live in different places if we're ever uh, retired. That can be done. She wants to live someplace where it's warm, you know, where there's a lot of stuff going around. I want to live someplace, well, I want to stay here where there's nothing going on. Like uh, living on a farm or something like that, and of course, having to either hire someone or, you know, let somebody farm because I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you, you own the property. You may not be physically doing anything with the land. Like was it Farmville? I played one of those yeah. like Sims yeah. Farms yeah. games. That's about as far as it it would go. You, and I, my family shape. starved to death. I way. think you you do really good in like Alaska, Josh. There's barely any people. It's nice and cold for yeah, you. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I don't know. Just makes me think about where I want to end up. I think I want to be that creepy son bitch. I got one coat and that's it all year round. <laughs> Broken down cabin, middle of nowhere. Once in a while I wander into town just to watch the kids cry and then I go back and <laughs> yep. I masturbate a lot. I mean, oh my oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> what else are you going to do? You're right? Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to hurt anybody, I but I'm, I'm going to be creepy. I'd like to live in a place isolated enough where folks would just assume I'd have trip wires outside of my <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah, dude, That guy definitely has trip wires out there. Look at that. It's so isolated. Oh, uh, man. Maybe one day. But we got we to gotta keep plugging away at this disaster for a while yet. It's going to be a bit. It'll be a stretch of time. All right. There you go. What is it? Wednesday? Yeah, bro. Wrapping her up. Wrapping her up, I say, uh, I'm going to call it good. Does anyone else? Wapple, will you swing by my cabin uh, once in a while and give me a VHS of the latest WrestleMania? <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> I'll help a brother. And out. bathe him? You'll have to bathe him. <laughs> All right. Maybe whatever. I'll have an, oh, an iron tub you can bathe me in. <laughs> With only cold water. Just an old barrel. You just, uh, <laughs> even though I bath barrel. Yeah, a bath barrel. Even yeah. though I recognize your vehicle, I'm still going to point a weapon at you as you're approaching <laughs> yeah. Yeah. with my VHS copy of the latest WrestleMania. I'm going to have to do your laundry down in the crick. <laughs> yes. Get on down to the crick. Come back real quick. And, and, and other poems that I might be able to recite. Bug Eye Wagon Jesus said that if I move north of the city, they'll teach me how to work on my own car and do country things. That, that's the life I want to live. True. So we're talking about one of these effing days. The 93X and Morning Show. 90. The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. It's savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning State Fair Specials. Savings from $30 on a tune-up all the way up to $950 on a new cooling system. Visit standardheating.com slash offers for details on all their State Fair deals.